Drakenheim is no more. Struck by a falling star, the city bathed in eldritch fire on that woeful eve. The tumultuous aftermath brought chaos, families torn asunder, and a kingdom shattered. Fifteen years later, monsters stalked the haunted streets of Drakenheim. Caught amidst rival factions struggling to rule the rubble, three unlikely partners venture forth into the crumbling city in search of riches, renown, and revenge. Good evening and welcome to Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes weekly 5th edition D&D game with me, Dungeon Master Monty Martin. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin and I'll be playing Sebastian Crow, the half-elf shadow sorcerer. And we are joined today by our good friends. Jill Denitis playing Veo Sanya, the tabaxi gloom stalker ranger rogue. And Joe O'Gorman playing Pluto Jackson, the human battlemaster. And thank you so much for joining us once again tonight's episode of dungeons and drakenheim is sponsored by skull splitter dice they've sent us a fantastic collection of their metal dice i've switched over to the kind of burnished gold dice now uh they've been doing pretty pretty well for me although we played our home game on sunday and i had a couple crit failures with them like natural good ones. keep using yeah, them. yeah, yeah keep I using those them. ones yeah. Yeah, thank you <laughs> Um, so we'll, we'll see how these ones shape up. Um, you can head on over to skullsplitterdice.com to pick out a set for your next campaign. And when you do, make sure that you use the discount code DDUDES at checkout to save 15% off your entire first order. Recently, our heroes have been embroiled in a the crossfire between the Hooded Lanterns and the Paladins of the Silver Order most prominently over a disagreement over Lenore von Kessel, the Queen of Drakenheim, who our heroes found in the ruins several weeks ago. After refusing to disclose her location, our heroes agreed to still go and collect her from Oscar Yorin, the mage that they had left her in the care of. Oscar Yorin, who they had left Lenore in the care of? Is that the best way I to know, say that? I sentence? know what you said. I know. Good. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> However, upon returning to Reed Manor, Oscar Yorin's one time hideout, they found it abandoned and overrun by a horrible creature <laughs> with a deadly death trap left for them in the basement. Following the wagon trails left behind, they have tracked Oscar Yorin's escape to none other than Shepherd's Gate, where the Hooded Lantern's barracks is. It seems that following the trail of Oscar Yorin's wagon, it moved into the city through Shepherd's Gate. Of course, since our heroes have had a falling out with the Hooded Lanterns, the city guard of Drakenheim, they were not permitted to follow the trail and have now been deciding on an alternate means of getting into the city as quickly as possible so that they can follow hot on the trail before it goes cold. We are now, however, they are beaten and bruised with their previous encounter and find themselves at a bit of an impasse as to their next move. Technically, we've lost the queen and found her, so we're like, we're even on the scoreboard. Are we? Of, I'm pretty of, sure we're of, like negative on the scoreboard. But then we told people that we found her and yeah. then lost her again. We kind of bragged a little bit. We found early. her, but we didn't tell anyone because that would have been in the plus, but now we're in the minus because people think we have her and we don't. You yeah, guys have I'm, a different way of scoring, I guess. I may have rubbed it in everybody's face that we were <laughs> way better than everybody else because we found the queen and then we, we lost her. Yeah. Um, I, I can't seem to cast spells very well right now. I'm a little drained mm -hmm. of all my energy. I'm very healthy, though. I don't feel any any pain, but running low. Running low on magical energies right now. How are you guys doing? Um, I, like, I've, I'm feeling only 42 hit points healthy. Um, <laughs> That's a weird way of putting it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I need, a, like, maybe a little bit more of a health potion, but I'm afraid that if we rest that we're gonna lose the trail. we're gonna lose the trail because it's raining today and it's muddy oh and... just today oh yeah J i mean is like it... more rain than a mist <laughs> less rain than a pour 
I don't know what that is, but it's rain. <laughs> Which could destroy the trail that yeah. we're trying yeah, to follow. Yeah, yeah, and true. I'm worried that if we don't hurry after it, that we're going to lose them in Drakenheim. So what's our fastest way into the city? It fastest will... way is not the most safest way. Pluto? Um, <laughs> yeah, so we can't take the gate. No. And even if we went around, what's the other gates that we can take? They're... Like what's the dangerous. what's the other one? What's the next safest route in? Uh, oh, there is no safe route in at this point. That was the safe route. So <clears throat> I think the question is, what's the fastest way in? Because we need to catch that trail. Well, we yeah. can't go around and we can't go under. So <laughs> like over the top, knowing <laughs> that this is dangerous. <laughs> I don't know if it's more or less dangerous than our other options, but it is, I would say, potentially our fastest option. Then the next question is, can we afford to set up a little camp before we go over the wall? <clears throat> like a short rest? Uh, short rest isn't going to help. You said you were really healthy. Um, Wait. I'm super healthy. So why not? Uh, well, you're only a half elf, so. Why not try? Uh, we still need eight hours, right? At yeah. least. I just try don't sleep. I meditate. Try a. How try long do you have to meditate for? Eight hours. Yeah. In try order a potion. To... Oh, you mean one of these? I pull <laughs> out. I pull out one of the glowing purple potions. Uh, I got the say aqua that delirium. The aqua that delirium. River entrusted you with. You could drink it. You'll regain one d three plus one levels worth of spells when you do. Um, but if you regain four or more levels worth of spells in this way, the next time you use a spell slot to cast a spell, you'll trigger a wild magic surge. But I want that many spells. And you want wild magic. So if Do anything, you? you should drink like Do three you? of them. <laughs> wild you magic. can drink more than one dose too if you no, want to. All, all I have we were written... told not to do that. Okay, I take I take very careful notes when Oscar was telling me about it. And all I wrote down here is uh, <laughs> more than one in 24 hour period equals bad. <laughs> you wrote, you just said, I wrote really careful notes. And then... <laughs> yeah, they're very careful. 24 hour period, bad. Mm -hmm. And there's a little drawing of Pluto beside Specifically, it. Specifically. <laughs> If you benefit from more than one dose of aqua delirium in tw a 24 hour period, the second dose will cause you to take 1d12 psychic damage for each spell level regained, and your hit point maximum will be reduced by an equal amount. I can't afford that. No, that's bad. <clears throat> I'm squishy yeah. on the best of days. Like if you're if you're really needing you spell it. slots, then I think that would be the only way I think you got to try it, it while keeping the trail. So it's either we keep the trail or we heal up. If well, we rest for eight hours, that, that card's gone. It? Yeah. Yeah. Unless we have another lead that we can follow. Did we get anything from the thieves can't on the No. On the map. Nothing. Well this is intense. We've what? never gone into Drakenheim this drained before. Uh mm. the walls though, you said that they're dangerous. Yep. We're standing at them. I look up. Hmm. What do the walls look like? The ancient walls of Drakenheim loom large this close to the city. When you approach the city from a distance, they seem quite low, especially compared to the spires and the high towers inside the city, and especially compared to things like the castle and the ancient tower of the Amethyst Academy, which are several hundred feet high. But the outer walls of Drakenheim are opulent and imperial walls that stand some 60 feet high, most of them perched upon rocky escarpments which dotted the hills around the Dran River. The walls encircle the city both north and south of the Dran River. And importantly, there every couple hundred feet there's a large guard tower that will be anywhere from 80 to 100 feet high tipped with a conical roof the largest towers are at the gates but also the two the towers that flank the where the dran river is are much larger because those towers also have machinery that raises up a chain fence that cr goes across the river as well so it can bar entry across the river too uh, and that that set of chains was pulled up and has been pulled up for years so there's a complete encirclement around the entire city the walls still are dotted with the remnants of battlements and hoardings 
the high arrow slits in a very Baroque style that leer out over the wall because there's machicolorated, machic, oh man, I just looked up how to say this. There's murder holes all underneath <laughs> that are out on arches. And the arches are carved in the shape alternating of angels, demons, and giants and dragons holding up the battlements that lurch out over top, looking down. The city is meant and designed to withstand a great siege. But over the years, having been over a century since the city was laid siege, even in its heyday, the walls became more of a decorative ornament and a sign of the opulence of the Von Kessels rather than just merely a defensive feature. Vale. Mm -hmm. What do you think? We going up? <clears throat> Beyond that, the walls throughout have a battlement that goes all the way around the city. One that is so large that in certain areas of the battlements and many of the towers, trebuchets and catapults could be driven. It was possible to drive an ox cart along the top of the city walls during its day. So the walls themselves are about 20 feet thick and 60 feet high. Um, Veo, there are a few stories of those who have crossed the walls in recent memory. This is not something that many people have tried and those who have, there have not been amazing stories about what had happened to them. Okay, well, what are the stories? Because I don't see anything dangerous up there. Like, I've, I've, we've been going in and out of the city a lot, and I've never seen anything on the walls. From what I've heard, people have tried to go over the walls, and I've never heard them make it across the top of the wall. So we're going to be pioneers. <laughs> First time for everything. Yeah. It's true. We have done many things more than other people have in Drakenheim, but I'm worried about our ability to climb and fight in our current, you know, position. Well, the way that I condition. see it, um, I would love to take a rest, but we're worried that we're going to lose the trail. And that is very important that we keep that trail. That's the most important. Also, I don't see any dangers up there, and I never have. So, I mean, realistically, what's the worst that could happen? Why would you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Sebastian, <laughs> one day those words are going to bite you. Um, well, okay, so bite them back. why don't we make a plan <laughs> that if anything shows up, we spectacularly run away because we're just rock climbing and we're not really into fighting right now. I as, mean, as the brave soldier of Caspia says. That is my normal way of doing things. So I'm not going to argue with you there. But um, I'm also worried like yeah. if we're able to get up the wall. Pluto, like how's your climbing? Um, I'm not that heavy, so you could just carry me. I'm pretty heavy. With You're my pretty negative heavy. strength. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, and I, I think... and I flex and I see like literally the, the muscle instead of going up goes, it goes down, down. And I'm like... <laughs> Totally. Look, I, I can I can hold my own, and with a bit of help from you guys, I think I can make it up. I'm going to be experimenting and mixing a bunch of potions together. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have Aqua Delirium in case of a fight. I have this potion of climbing that was sold to me by some really large man, and I, I've never tried his potion, so we hope that it works. Otherwise, we're in a lot of trouble you're um, trying a bunch of drinks that people made you yeah and you're just gonna wait so you're gonna drink both the aqua delirium and the potion of climbing because remember what they put on the labels to not mix them <laughs> yeah i don't think they come from the same company that's the only concern that i have <laughs> i don't know that this one this one's various shades of brown and gray and this one is glowing purple i think mm. they'll look nice together in my stomach it'll mix up well yeah yeah you might want to just have like one meal with it well i'm going <laughs> at least like just something just to kind of coat the innards when was the last time we ate i mean when was the last time i didn't eat bear's eating honest. right now i look over <laughs> <Bayo's>. 
<laughs> I mean, <laughs> life is a buffet. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, oh. Um, I'll drink the climbing potion first, and if we get into trouble, I might need to drink the aqua delirium. That's a good plan. That's well, a great plan. That is that is the plan. Although then I have to sp- spend a turn. Nope, that's not a real thing. I don't like talking not in character. Um, <laughs> I have to drink the potion, which could take time. Yeah, there. I guess yeah. the question we need to ask ourselves is: Is going after the queen potentially worth our lives? I know for me, yes. I think it's our best ticket to the Drakenheim that we want to see. Yeah. Now that you put it that way. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Thing is, is that as much as I... Like, the queen is important. To, like, she's like our biggest bargaining chip right now between these factions. If we screw this up, we could be, you know held in jail or worse by the and like these guys run you know they're not mess around like the queen of thieves is one thing like it's a bunch of vagabonds and and muggers and stuff which we've handled quite nicely but you know paladins with flamethrowers and you know the town guard is a little bit you know it's it's hard to make enemies this early we need we need them on our side so yeah and i I need to be able to live in this city after we're finish this whereas if i make enemies of everyone here then i have nowhere else to go whereas i mean there's gaspia but i've never been there before you can come live in my palace you guys just want to move to <laughs> caspia you just want to call it <laughs> all right new campaign <laughs> we can just retire like we can just We're hang just like, out hey, peace. it'll um, be a simple life um, but a well-earned one well i have to be your servant though no I think I that we see. should. Uh... I won't do that. Okay, this is sounding more. <laughs> <laughs> um, what? So what I think? Yeah, we we need to find the queen. Yes. And and also because all the stories, everyone knows we're the ones that found her and lost her. So it's kind of. Well, they don't know we lost her, her yet. <laughs> oh yeah, they don't know that. No. But and we want them to never know that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's the goal. We want nobody to know that we lost the queen. As far as they know, we're going to was... show up at the mill. We said three days. We're still on day number one. You know what? I think it's all in the the PR way you spin the story, which is that we didn't lose her. She was stolen from us. No, she moved. No, no, no. We moved her if, uh, strategically. If we arrive at the mill with the queen. In three days. That's all that needs to be known. <laughs> Nothing needs to be said. Yeah, I have the best idea. <laughs> Can we dress the rabbits <laughs> up like the queen and say this is the horrible thing that happened to her? We have some of her clothes we, in your tower. Plan. That's a great backup plan. That is a plan. backup plan. We have her Prince clothes. Petunia is our backup plan. <laughs> if we Princess Petunia. Look what, the, look what Petunia. delirium did to her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Regardless of your backup plan... Maybe we'll call that like a plan E. Oh, <laughs> oh there's a few iterations before um, that. Okay, true, true, We're going to take the wall. <laughs> Are you going to take the wall? I don't see anywhere where else around Not only will we climb the wall, we will take the wall and we will control the wall. Okay. Oh, yeah. If we pull up our map together, where? There's a lot of wall <laughs> in this city. You're currently around point five, which is uh, Shepherd's Gate. And if your goal is to head back there, parts of the wall around Shepherd's Gate are patrolled by the Hooded Lanterns, but they don't have the resources to patrol the entirety of the, of the wall. Thus, you have your pick of the litter of where you would like to cross. Veo, you're the navigator. Yeah, um... What's in the middle ward? The middle ward, if you recall, you've actually headed through that area before. That's where you found the theater district. Oh, yeah. And the various costumes that you looted from one of the carts there. Much of the middle ward and the temple ward is a is crawling with gnolls. Gnolls, yeah. Okay. It's mostly the, mid, it's mostly the middle class sort of districts of the city in that area. Mm-hmm. So there's a larger array of houses, homes, tenement buildings, shops, various administrative buildings, and other like commerce was in that area. 
Whereas as you head north around Queen's Park Garden, you find more upper class districts until you reach Old Town, which is where the nobility typically dwelt in the in the heyday. Mm. The South Ward being the more industrial district of Drakenheim. I'm thinking maybe not like quite Market Street, but like a little bit more north so we can potentially avoid some gnolls. It's just we don't know what kind of monsters are a bit north of, of the barracks. Like So between Market Street and Shepherd's Way? Yeah. Because we also don't want to straight, because we have to backtrack to pick up the trail again too, right? Yeah. We don't, don't want to stray too far from it, but I also know that like, on both sides, there's potentially monsters, which is why we're not taking those gates. Uh, the one, the one thing to also keep in mind if we're doing that is number nine on our map is the uh, the hooded lanterns barracks. Yeah. So we want to stay clear of that because we don't want to awkwardly be walking by and they're like, "Hey, you're not supposed to be here." No. Yeah, but the next section of the wall, we can kind of like scoot around back towards five and the main shepherd's way if we can go. Is that how far they're they're patrolling the wall, or is that far enough away where they're not going to be there? Whereabouts? Um, just past nine, or sorry, just north of nine. You um, can't say for certain. That's okay. nine is where their barracks proper is. Yeah. It's part. Of, it's the barracks is abuts the main city walls. Mm. Alternatively, we can go a little bit more south, but then we could run into some knolls on our way back. So potentially running into the hooded lanterns or question mark monsters from Market Gate. Yeah. Or Knowles. But that also puts us close to their kind of den at number eleven, right? That's where they're that's where the Lord of the Feast is hanging out. So that yeah. whole area is probably very But if we got over the wall, say um not at five, but two wall Spaces two wall down. segments down yeah and then we backtrack towards the wall it'd be easy for us to pick up the trail there um versus if we went in above nine uh then we'd have to backtrack towards the barracks knowing Fair. the map if he went through the the gate do you think he would have stayed on shepherd's way and headed north towards queen's park garden or headed south towards like market square or middle ward if we had to take a, a i can't say for sure best guess. but shepherd's way would be probably more safe especially <clears throat> since we go across market street further down and it is safe for us but we also know our way around i'm, I'm assuming yeah. he knows at least part of the city or else he'd be a fool to come back in here because maybe that may help us decide if we want to go north or south of the gate yeah um but even then, even if we were to take it on the north side where the barracks are and like avoid the barracks somehow, it still would potentially lead us. I think it would be easier for us to take the side streets towards where Shepherd's Way is from the south. Okay, and let's do that. Let's yeah. do it. So the I south? You. Veil. A little bit towards the south, far enough away where we know they're not patrolling, but I don't okay. want to go right into the middle ward. Two wall okay. segments down <clears throat> from five. Okay. Let's put the map down. Nice. Superb. Right where there's nothing and everything's fine and there's a ladder. There's <laughs> even a ladder that cli you can climb up. Rope. Rope ladder. <laughs> Oh, how convenient. <laughs> I thought you said there was going to be a rope ladder here, Pluto. <laughs> oh, sorry, guys. <laughs> Wait, how tall is this wall? 60 feet. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Appro approximately 60 feet. The construction of it does slightly vary depending on where the escarpments are. Mm -hmm. But to from usually from the ground to the top of the battlements that are along the walls is a approximately 60 feet that's a lot if i fell from that would i be on a scale of one to ten how hurt am i you would be six d tens worth of or six d six worth of falling damage for falling. six zero six d six it's ten it's one d six falling damage per ten feet fell oh six d six okay i can i can survive that full damage that's ouch it would hurt. I was just thinking my rope trick goes up 60 feet. If I want. I have a 60 foot rope. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, it does. It's 
boxes we up, just, up we to just, a 60 foot long rope. I'm coming up. <laughs> <laughs> we're just climbing up. Hang out Doesn't mean people can't hit us while we're climbing the rope, but I mean, we got to climb a rope anyway. Well, you got to climb a rope anyways. But. Yeah. Imagine you had a rope that went up and, and then if we really wanted to, we just hang out there for a minute. <laughs> wow. It's either that or we can, do we want to be silent as we're climbing or none or we can just climb man if you just had a 60 foot rope that we could climb up what do you think what do you think sebastian i mean i'm just excited to drink this potion and hopefully <laughs> climb this wall without a rope i'm gonna see how that works oh, okay so you'd rather just knuckle it i mean you're 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 the one who doesn't have a potion of climbing so well, I'm uh, I'm all for assisted climbing. <laughs> well, we're going to help you, yeah. But it, is it going to kill your spell slots? It'll kill my best spell slot, yeah. So I'm wondering maybe plan That's C? It, C, yeah, it's in between. <laughs> it's not quite E. <laughs> we're filling in these plans So please go. have it on the ready so if, then I have a rope to grab as I fall to my no, yeah, yeah. doom. I can do that. Or if I fall, I can just climb back up that rope. Like, as I get up and I'm like, ow. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. As like a, okay, well, I'm obviously not climbing the wall. Let's do the rope trick. <laughs> so it's good to have a backup when one of your plans hits a wall. Oh. Come on, man. We're, <laughs> this is dangerous here. Good it's pipe. serious. This is serious, serious <laughs> business. Uh. Super serious. Um, I mean, I have a climbing speed, so, and I put out my claws and I'm like, with these. Puppies, I have fifty kitties? feet of rope and With these kitties and pit pitons p p the p word <laughs> iron spikes that you can drive into the wall that one yeah. and I have a hammer and I yeah. love hammering things. All righty for you team. So you head south <laughs> what? into the sprawl. What are you guys talking about? Alongside the ramshackle buildings, which are little more than a story tall, close this close to the city wall, there's a little bit of a dead zone between the buildings and the city wall proper an area of rocky outcrops and crab grass where the remains of several ditches have been dug intermittently the city walls were never surrounded by a moat proper but in ages past ditches had been dug during sieges in front of the city wall many of them now just filled in holes again it's been over a hundred years since the city was laid siege the area here there is a singular square tower reaching up another 20 feet above the wall abutted on each corner there is this rusted kind of green metal of the hammered of hammered copper and brass decorating the tower carved in place in the shape of draconic wings and then again all along underneath along the walls the defensive purpose of the walls originally had been now decorated with these Baroque sculptures of gargoyles and angels and demons and various giants that are holding up the battlements themselves. Always something that was mocked by the people of Drakenheim as they felt, what good is a statue against a siege weapon? But the Von Kessels were not known for their pragmatism. But it looks pretty. It does. Okay, so um, what's our plan for actually climbing? Well, you have it's a climb stone, speed. so I just grab the stones. I'm going to drink a potion. Are you just going to like hammer in? Well, if metal you guys, spikes? I can also I, help you hammer yeah, them. Yeah, like, like if above. you guys go ahead and hammer them in and and tie in rope, then my life is thousand percent easier. Yeah, I'm very good at hammering. <laughs> Both of you. <laughs> 
No, I actually have no idea. I've never used tools before. Together, uh, if we um, tie... I was a really, really? Bad blacksmith. I was going to say, author was a blacksmith. <laughs> yeah, why do you think that it was uh, called Crow and Son before I came home? I, I just picture sons. you going to Hammer and I you know. just miss. He called it Crow and Son originally for me. I failed. I got shipped off to boarding school and... Um, then his new son took over as a good blacksmith. <laughs> I tried I tried making a suit of armor once. <laughs> then he never let me near the forge again. Oh. Hmm. That's um okay. my other thing is I have my uh, my hook shot, my grapple shot. So I know like and I look up, do I see any like wood uh along the top? There are the remnants of some hoardings in some places okay. again those pieces of wood are about 60 feet up okay at least if i climb halfway i can then pull myself up how can another how third, fast 30 feet. can i climb rope how fast you can you climb rope without a climbing speed your climb speed is a half of your ground speed so if it's 60 feet that means it takes about four turns for me to climb. If one of you guys got to the top and put down a 50-foot rope, I have to just make it up the first 10, and then I could climb the rest of it. We could pull you up after. Well, rope assisted. Okay, I'm going to try to pull you up. Right? Yeah, okay. So I could wait for you guys to get to the top. It's just that that could be potentially four rounds of mm. no Pluto. If there's something up there. It is made a little more difficult by the fact that these walls as worked masonry stone that are designed to have a defensive feature, although one that has largely fallen into ruin, they are, if you're going to be hammering those spikes into the wall, it is solid work stone. So that may slow down your process, at least necessitating spending an action to secure those if you want wish to do that I mean, you'll need something to assist your climb whether it is iron spikes and rope or a potion of climbing or veo's abilities because th those aren't necessary to assist that climb just grabbing onto the walls there's some things where things have broken away but as long as there's some form of assistance, you'll be able to make progress. Okay. I'm even wondering if there are places where it has broken away, can you take some dirt and mold it into something that can at least be... As long as it's loose stone and not, not solid stone, I can excavate sections mm -hmm. of the wall. Yeah. Is there a section of the wall that looks a little bit more roughed up than some of the others? Not a section where there's enough purchase mm. there are ruined sections of the wall along the south side of the city though oh that's too far mm. yeah. i can at least mold earth at the bottom to give us a five foot head start <laughs> hmm. that would actually help because then i only have to jump five feet to get to the rope i do it i move some dirt and form a mound for us to start climbing from okay good job mold you mold some earth and get a little bit of a ramp unless there's a shovel nearby <laughs> <laughs> we spend two days making a giant 50 foot <laughs> an earthen of... ramp yeah <laughs> it yeah. goes right up <laughs> i could if you guys give me two days no. no and then it turns out that resting was just easier <laughs> <laughs> okay are we uh we got this are we ready i feel super confident which is usually what happens when we fall into a trap so let's do it i'm also feeling very confident like i said there's nothing bad that i've seen on these walls so yeah and your eyes see everything even I've in the never dark missed a single mm. thing veil have you been next to me the whole time yes <laughs> have you been standing right there breathing down your neck <laughs> oh, eating i did not see her there anyway i've seen Sorry, I've heard rumors of what has been seen by people being thrown back over the wall when they've tried to climb. All right, let's go. Let's just hope they throw us on the other side, and then <laughs> it's mission accomplished. That's where <laughs> that would we need be to preferable. Go. That's probably <laughs> throw me. And if I hit a roof, then it's like I'm good. All right. uh, so I guess after you. All right, here I go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we climb at the same time because we're going to both help put the ropes up for Pluto, right? Okay. I pull out my potion of climbing and I swig it back. And I'm starting to climb like, come on, it come on. It tastes like gravel. Yeah. It tastes like gravel. 
gravel. Like gravel. <laughs> gravel? <laughs> yeah, it tastes like gravel mixed with gravel. Oh, like no. Dirt. I don't know if other countries... Ha- I think gravel might be a Canadian thing. Is it? Oh. I think so, yeah. Uh-huh. I think it, I think it might be. Like chalky. Yeah, it's it's, yeah gra- gravel is like a very chalky, medicine-y sort of taste really to gross. it. How does your stomach feel? <laughs> I don't know, like a bunch of rocks are tumbling around in there. Yeah. <laughs> Superb. So you begin the climb, pulling your way up the escarpment at the base of the city walls. Can I ask, when I drink the potion of climbing, am I like Spider-Manning up the wall? I imagine that as you drink the potion of climbing, what happens is the tips of your fingers become like gravel spikes almost. And you can just latch into the wall itself. I am so cool. All right. (laughs) Why don't I have a spell to do this? I'm just like, I have this all the time. (laughs) I'm climbing up and I'm like, oh, my nails are getting a bit. I'll have to go get a get them buffed after this <laughs> climbing up. and i'm shouting encouraging words from the bottom wait not shouting no i'm not shouting i'm whispering and yeah, you go okay. to shout and i'm like Shh, you're doing great <laughs> so the two of you start climbing together pluto what are you doing beyond I'm, shouting uh, encouragement um beyond encouraging words i'm also just looking out along the top i know i don't have a great vantage point but i'm spinning I'm constantly spinning, um, looking around in every direction, and then also reverse spinning so I don't get dizzy, because that's how you don't get dizzy. So every time I spin three times one way, I spin three times the other way. Ah, science. Watch out, math. Okay. And when are you going to start? Are you? Are, is the idea that these two are going to climb up and toss a rope down to you? We're going to go like one movement speed up. Hammer okay. in some of uh, some spikes and then like tie a rope to them and lower it so that he has I something see. I see. to climb. Okay. And but you tie but it surely. around your waist. Don't forget to tie it around So by waist. one movement speed up, do you mean you're going a quarter up or uh, or halfway up? Do half. 30 feet. Yeah. If you half and then the other half, then it's good. That's true. Okay. And then you know what I can do is if I go half and then I can, well, I, I don't know if there's any, is there a purchase place for my grapple shot? There was wood. We talked about there being wood. Once you're halfway up the wall, when you look straight up, you can see one of the murder holes underneath. You could try to fire your grapple shot such that it goes through the murder hole and latches on inside. (gasps) Oh, okay. It would be a difficult shot, but you could go for it. it. Give it a go and see. And then I can at least put a rope down. And you can like hammer it in on the way. We're, we're saying we're like having this conversation while climbing up the wall. Do we make yeah, it the yeah, thirty yeah. feet just fine? Yeah, you climb her up the first thirty feet and start hammering in the iron spikes to get ready the rope down. It's a good thing my feet are also spikes. And then Veo, what are you, are you going to go for it? I'm gonna go for it, but I'm also like looking around, just like being really like fidgety about like being on the Morse wall because I'm expecting okay. like at any moment something's going to come out and just like scoot me off the wall. Okay. So I'm just like, okay, we're doing this. Yeah. Yeah. I got a spike in here kind of. And I take my grapple. Never mind. Is it hookshot or grapple shot? <laughs> you can call it either. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> grapple shot. And I try to aim it and shoot. <clears throat> uh, okay. Up one it's like trying to hit a bullseye, but go for it. Wait, you're leaving me here hammering alone goodbye 17 plus what are we adding your full attack bonus oh okay Do-do-do. if i use sharpshooter does it make it more <laughs> accurate um 26 so with that masterful shot the the line of the Ooh. the grapple shot fires straight up latches through the the up the murder hole and grabs into place on the the bit of the stone the stonework. It's a perfect shot. And the immediately when it lands into place, it's gonna start reeling you up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I'm Bye. I'm there in the wall, and I'm like, wait, you were supposed to help me hammer, and then you're just gone. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay, thanks, Veo. Cool. So you're right underneath the overhang of the battlements. Mm-hmm dangling on the edge of the the grapple in between these arches and these two muscled looking atlas like figures that are holding up 
the oh, battlement cool. over the other heads. And I just go, hey, how you doing? <laughs> um, <laughs> if they talk back to you, I'm freaking out. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm, I'm not clapping I'm up. making sure. I'm just like looking at it like, hey, how you doing? And I'm like waiting for a reply. Do I hear any reply? If you do, it's stone cold. Oh. Uh, <laughs> another one. Right. He's on fire. Um, <laughs> so I'm kind of like on the edge up in between yeah. these. Okay. Yeah. Um, I... Um, is there anything like, is the hole big enough for me to put my hand where I can like tie a rope? The, the hole is big enough that you could probably fit your hands because you don't wear any armor on your, on your hands. You're, you're skinny. Yeah. 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 In a very much like a cat pawing <laughs> through the hole of a box sort of way. Yep. Um, although the, the hole is slightly longer than, is longer than your arm itself. Okay. So only your arm would be able to fit in through the bottom and it kind of curves a bit so if i were to take a rope in my hand and toss it over the edge would it come over or do i not have enough leeway if to you do toss that? the rope over the battlements mm -hmm. as long as you have you could toss yeah you could either try to loop the rope around one of the battlements yeah. like tie a loop and throw it over or if you have a grapple that it can secure to you on the rope that would mm -hmm. do it as well I, I don't think I have a grapple. <laughs> Keep personally. hammering. Um, what about a weapon like a dagger or something with weight that you could throw over? Um, I have a crowbar if you had stayed down here and <laughs> talked about this. Sorry. Uh, you know what? I'll just start to <laughs> climb around the battlement and try to get over top. Because nice. okay. I figure I'll try to get the rope attached to something when I get up there. Okay. Yeah. You clamber over the battlements it's a difficult climb give me an athletics check my skull spur. Oh, nice 18 because i'm a minus one okay <laughs> oh, nice. you clamor over the battlements grabbing onto the edge of the arrow slit pulling your, yourself up and over and into place what are the two of you doing while this happens I'm, I've been hammering a spike into the wall this whole time alone. And um, I, I tie a rope around the spike and uh, I lower it down for, for Pluto. Cool. And then I, I call down. I'm like, can you climb that? I'm going to give it a good pull. Did he it, hammer it? It's solid. Yeah. <gasps> you did it. He this is, is a blacksmith. This is son. the strongest I've ever been in my life. Uh, thank my father for that. He taught me how to hammer spikes into walls once. <laughs> I You're... hope it paid off. Good luck. What were you doing hammering spikes into? Well, wall? whatever it was, whatever class I was hanging trip you a were picture on. in our house. <laughs> um, okay. Giant spike. I'm going to start to climb up to the halfway point. Okay. And I'm going to keep climbing up. Okay. As the two of you climb and as Veo clambers over the top of the battlement, Pluto and Sebastian, you two can make perception checks. My passive perception is 19. Does that help? Yes, it does. Mine is 10. Does that help? Give me the roll. And I also rolled a 19. I rolled a 9. So my passive okay. perception is higher than my roll. Okay. And Vale, you can give me a really quick perception check as well. 21. Okay. So, Veo, you hear this. S Pluto, you see this. Sebastian, you're not able to react quick enough. As <laughs> Veo clamors over the top of the battlement, one of the two angelic-looking figures behind her, its arm releases from the wall, and it lurches forward and be and its wings come off the wall with it and it kicks the wings back and it begins to turn around to try to grab Veo's leg. Uh-oh. What? Roll for initiative. Oh! Oh, no. <laughs> so it didn't talk to you before because it was rude. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'm wondering if it doesn't know who my father is. <laughs> and Sebastian, <laughs> you are surprised. Sweet. <laughs> wait, wait till my father hears about this. What do you got? Um, I got a 17. Okay. I got a 20. 20? 13. Okay, so Sebastian's actually first. But I'm too busy. Pluto looks up and goes, <gasps> and I look down and go, what? Is it my hammering? <laughs> Are you looking at my butt again? It's my butt, isn't it? Well, I can't help Okay, it. so let's also, let's do some fun uh, setup stuff with our cool uh, axe and shield accessories. Axe and shield. Oh, oh. no. Here we go. You're, you're at the top, I'm at right? the top. You're like, do you, am I, okay. I Is she over? I'm like half, or is she half like, over. Yeah. Like that? I'm literally like, <laughs> Pull myself over. I'm like, Bleh. I'm on the baby one. Yeah, if we put uh, Pluto on the baby one and just as <laughs> I'm close on the, baby the walls one. as you can, that'll just help us estimate. And let's uh, let's see what that looks like. <laughs> hope, hope that's cool. <laughs> that's really cool. Yeah, I'm right underneath you. Yeah. Wait, yeah. So cool. So cool. Yeah. So and just so you know, for the for the scale on the map. Um, the vertical scale is only half what it actually is. Oh. Yeah, because I don't have walls that high. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you need more Dwarven Forge. I, I definitely need more Dwarven Forge, yeah. The, the thickness the of the wall is correct, but the height is, is not. Good because, yeah, I need... It takes twice as much wall to build a wall twice as high. So, yeah. Logic. Mental Logic, mind. yeah. Okay. So you're about halfway. I'm about a quarter way. There is at the top. And there's a oh winged... Gosh. You want to place that right beside Veo? Oh, gosh. Winged yeah. creature coming out of the wall. Oh, that's... Yeah. Right on a person. Okay, so Sebastian, you are surprised. Yeah. So uh -oh. uh, essentially underneath the battlements are sh sculptures like this holding it up. And one of them has basically broken off the wall and is turning around to try to grab Veo by the foot. So as it, as it comes up, it takes it, one of its claws and reaches towards you, Veo, to grab you. Mm. Getting a 17 to hit. Oh yeah, hits. So it grabs you by the leg and it starts to try to pull you off the wall, oh, no. make a strength check. No. Oh, oh! <laughs> what a badass! Bam. Not safe, right? Yeah. Check. Thirteen. Well, I only got a four. Oh, good. Oh. So it so as as you're coming over the wall, you yank your leg forward and it pulls it forward towards you, and you're able to hold yourself on the wall between the two sides of the battlement as it pull, pulls you back and it takes its other claw and it rakes down your back. Oh, this is like the fifth one. This is so uh, getting only a 10 to hit. Nope. Oh. Okay. I'm like my back is safe. <laughs> okay. Veo, it's your turn. You were um, grabbed by this creature. Maybe it was I'm just trying to pet grabbed. you. Um... <clears throat> It's just trying to pay. <laughs> it's just making friends. What are you talking Purr. about? Purr. I'm um, still looking at you. It, I'm grabbed and I'm grabbing onto the wall. Yeah. Uh, I want to kick back with my feet to kind of try to launch myself forward. Okay. The wall. So kick, basically try to kick it off of you to break a, break the grab. And and pull myself forward. Like, okay. Like kick out and, and try to get cool. not only it off, but like propel myself forward. All right. You can make an acrobatics check against its athletics. 20. I get an 18. <gasps> so you manage to push yourself off, breaking the grab. That's your action. Yep. You still have your movement. And then I'm going to use my feline agility and... Run away like a cat. <laughs> okay. Right. Where are you going to run and I where to? I want to run um, up the wall. Okay. But I want to first move back towards as close as I can to the city and across. Okay. So I get... Um, um, boop, 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 what do I get? 60 feet? 60 feet. Okay. So you run along the wall towards the tower at the very edge. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Um, as you run along the wall, you can hear a cracking noise as another one of these creatures on the battlement on the tower you're running towards begins to crack off of it and lurch down towards you. Mm. So there's another one of them. Right up over here. Woo! The one that's coming off the wall that we can see, is it flying right now? It is. Oh. It's borne aloft on, upon wings of stone. Wow. Cool, mm-hmm. cool, cool. Uh, and finally, another one cracks off the front battlements. Over here. And it's on this side. Pluto, you're up. <laughs> oh, geez. Um, how far did I make it before this all started happening? You are halfway up the wall. Okay. So I just made it to like the first yep. entry point. Yep. And Sebastian's still climbing. Mm-hmm. So I don't have any more where to go. Well, uh, essentially, Sebastian has been bringing a rope with him that he's carrying. So if you want to keep going, it's on Sebastian to stay in place. It's tied around me. You'll be fine. What's the worst that could happen? I'm going to I'm gonna give it a tug and look at you. What? <laughs> oh, look out. Gargoyles. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess I'm going to... Oh, God, Sebastian. Okay. I'm going to tie the lower rope to mm-hmm. myself. Mm-hmm. And then climb up. So, so then at least if I fall, I only fall halfway. Okay. You are 45 feet up the wall. Woohoo! Okay. Magic. You go to the top of the round with Sebastian. I shocked that there's suddenly all of these flying monstrosities, monstrosities around. And I've been staring at Pluto the whole time, yelling at him, not having a clue. I noticed them and I quickly reach into my pocket with my spiky hands and fumble around for this glowing purple potion. <laughs> and I, I, I have a bit of trouble for a moment while I'm trying to figure out how to open the potion with my spike hands. And I finally get it open and I just like, pop i shove the whole thing in my mouth and like tilt my head back to drink it oh like one of those open mouth chugs yeah, that, yeah i open yeah, mouth yeah. chug it and then i spit it out and it hits pluto in the face <laughs> i accept um it. so i guess i roll a d6 uh yep you can roll that d6 nice i get five so that's three plus one so i get four and you a- get four spell slots and you immediately trigger a wild magic surge <laughs> <laughs> From the delir- the aqua delirium. Please don't. Oh no, I'm tied to you. <laughs> no, this is amazing. Um, <laughs> and as well, we're gonna have to roll on the potion miscability table because you've imbibed. You're under the effects of two potions simultaneously. So this is just a delirium soup happening. So you drink this potion back, and you just feel your stomach churn as it. Heads down your throat like it's thick like mercury. And you feel the magic surge through your blood veins. And Pluto, you, you just see his... What are you like, drinking? This purple light shoots out of <laughs> Sebastian's eyes as he's his body is filled with magic. And you can roll me a D100. Oh, baby. You know what I picture your nails like? You know, if you've ever seen when you have really long fake nails and you try to like tap on a screen. You're just like... <laughs> I got a 55. 55. Oh okay. <laughs> As all of this magic goes through Sebastian's body, all of his hair falls out. <laughs> no! <laughs> and and like there's pore there's nodules of glowing purple energy coming out from all the pores oh. on the, the bottom of the follicles on his hair as basically the energy shoots through your body turns your hair white for a moment and then all the hairs burn away <laughs> as the as the magic surges through your body now because you've drank two potions though you're going to trigger a second wild magic surge so roll another one inside of my body there's a lot <laughs> happening 86 Okay. I forget all the wild magic tables. And as the explosion of energy comes out, you cast mirror image on yourself <laughs> and duplicate <laughs> Sebastians appear. God, there's like so many Seba- how many Sebastians? Uh there's f- now there's four Sebastians total. 
And it's at this moment that I realize what's happened to my hair because I see the duplicates yeah. of myself. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Oh, God. Oh, God. And one final roll on the potion miscability table. You're no longer carrot top. One more D100? <laughs> yeah. That's a 75. So far. Okay. No so fun. both the potions just work normally then. Hooray. Oh. oh. Beyond the surge. Yeah. Oh. Um, cool. And I gained some spell slots back. Yeah. You gained four movement. levels worth of spell slots. Yeah. Worth so it. I'm going to take two second level spells. Okay. And I'm going to keep climbing. Okay. You continue climbing. Uh, that puts yourself right up at the battlements. <laughs> She's wobbly. And you come up and I start laughing. <laughs> Four of and you four climb of you. over. <laughs> yeah, four Sebastians Ball climb over, over the wall. Sebastian. You just, yeah, you yeah. see four, four of me just like climbing over and, and you, yeah, I'm they're all bald. I'm a bit concerned, but I can't get over the fact that you have no hair. And my eyes are glowing purple. Wait, does he have eyebrows? No, his eyebrows are gone. <laughs> Man, I look freaky, like glowing purple eyes, no yeah. hair, no eyebrows. There's four of me. Yeah. What did the monsters do to you? You had a rub down there, eh? It's gargoyles. I feel powerful. <laughs> okay. At the sight of this, the gargoyles, um, though they ha one has the bearings of an angel, one has it more looks like a classical gargoyle. The other is more like a devil in its appearance, and two of them fly right towards Sebastian. And another flies right towards Veo. I mean, this is great. Yeah, you're doing fine, Pluto. Cool. Thanks for carrying me. You're, you're, um, still, tied, you're still tied to me. Oh, for sure. If you fall, I'm going back. And over the, the wall. first gargoyle swoops down toward, towards Sebastian, and it. Um, We have to find out if it's going to attack you or your duplicates. So roll uh, two uh, two d20s for the for this because it's coming in with both of its claws. I get a crit and a five. Okay, so its first claw comes down. On, basically, it goes for two separate duplicates. One of which is the real you. Ow. So the fir the first <laughs> one. It hits the duplicate and tears through it, and the duplicate just disintegrates into magic. The second one, it gets a 16 to hit. I cast shield. Okay, a glimmering shield of energy blocks the blow. But two, the, now, I need you to roll two more d20s as the other gargoyle comes in to attack the other mirror images. Five and eleven. Five and eleven. Okay, so the first one destroys another duplicate, but also hit manages to hit the real you, um, getting a nineteen to hit. Uh, even with my shield, it breaks through my shield, Bre busting through the shield, slashing into you for five points of slashing damage. Ah, my most. Veo, me. the other one swoops down upon you, mm -hmm. attacking twice. Getting a 17 and a 14 to hit. One of them hits. And that is going to be eight points of slashing damage as it bursts off the tower, swoops down with a low dive, and kind of uppercuts you with, it, with its claws. And then wow. it, uh, it flutters a little bit back up in the air. Is it still within my reach? Within your uh, melee reach, no. Yeah, no. Do I? Does it get an opportunity? Do I get an opportunity to attack? Yeah, sure. Go. Yeah. For it. Take out my longbow as it's trying to get away. And do you have any melee weapons? Because you oh, don't sorry, make it's opportunity melee? attacks. Uh, yeah. Then I can weapons. take my scimitar. Okay. Oh, cool. Sixteen. You uh, you slash at it as it flies away. Roll the damage. It catches the back of it. Nice. Uh, nine. There's a noticeable chip as its elemental hide absorbs most of the blow. I chipped it. 
<laughs> I saw you did. You Veo, did it is your turn. Damage. Ooh. Okay. Mm. Um, I am going to back up further, thirty feet. And like, yeah, you tried to get away from me. And now I'm gonna take my my longbow. And I'm going to take two shots. And I'm going to aim for, like, where I got it with the scimitar. I'm like, maybe I cracked his armor. Maybe I can get a get a shot in there. Uh, and I get... 13? 13. The shot goes wide as it wings down and deflects the arrow. Mm, and I take one more shot. Uh, that is a 20. This one... Strikes true. Boom. Boom. 17 damage. Cool. Nice. Did I get it in the crack? <laughs> <laughs> Aiming for the crack. <laughs> cool. The... It stutters... In it partway in its flight, but it wheels around as it, as if to fly back towards you. Oh. Pluto, you're up. I'm a climb. Okay. Now, if I climb normally, can I make it to the top? With an athletics check, yes. Ooh. Do it. Twenty five. Gritting your teeth and grabbing the loose bits of stone in one of the legs of one of these creatures. <laughs> You send everything tumbling down to uh, in a disastrous fall. <laughs> You're you welcome, managed to everyone. make it up to the top. Yep. Um, and then I'm going to and you leap over the battlements. Yep. Oh, nice. Ha ha. Ha ha. And uh, I'm still struggling with that. <laughs> um, is the is the gargoyle right on top of Sebastian? Yes. Clawing him. Yep. I'm going to stab it with a javelin. Go for it. <laughs> And I miss terribly. <laughs> and then I'm going to stab it again. And I miss even more terribly. Stop stabbing me. <laughs> I'm stabbing your mirror gargoyle. images. <laughs> I can't believe I'm missing. Um, and then I'm going to um, try to watch you get murdered. <laughs> Thank you. No. We go to the top of the round with Sebastian. Am I able to like with like get to this side without? Yes. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. She's like rolling over <laughs> yeah. the top. But give me an acrobatics check. Otherwise, I will. Because you can use the battlement to shield yourself as you go over. With an acrobatics check, I'll give them disadvantage on their attack of opportunity. I got a six. You get a six? So you stumble forward, um, and the gargoyle instead slashes out towards you getting a 13 to hit no nah. wait yeah yeah <laughs> and that's gonna be eight points of slashing damage as it reaches and grasps towards you as you clamor over the battlements oh my back and legs are in pain um, now that you're all on the wall I think we should move the battle camera so let's let's just pull in so we don't make chat anyone vomit let's uh, pull the battle cam down while we move it and then get it onto the walls itself Camera repositioning. These are production values. Oh, nice. Next up, we'll buy five more cameras so we can give you every angle. <laughs> That's out of our budget. <laughs> That's so far out of our budget. We're not actually doing that. Nope. I'm, I'm full of lies. I'm sorry, everyone. Do you feel good about yourself? No. <laughs> you're, just, you're just very convincing. Very persuasive. Yeah, you sold me. I have a high charisma. <laughs> Deception. In real life and the game. I don't know what Thank that's going to look like, but we'll see it. We'll pull it up there, Kyle, and let's see if that looks cool. Looks good? Eh, I, go, I like it. It's dramatic. <laughs> cool. Okay, so I've clambered over. Mm-hmm. I'm going to cast a Scorching Ray. Cool. On which one? So I'm going to blast the guy that was just clawing at me right here. Okay. Pew, pew. So I pull out my <laughs> finger guns and I pew, pew. Ugh. 
Hold on. Wait. Where am I? I get a 14. It collides with it, but does not penetrate through its elemental body. Ah, I'm aiming for its stupid mouth. I hit wherever I hit last time. (laughs) With a 14? Um, I get a 12. Okay. My final beam, I'm like trying to hit it in its open mouth because I figure that will hurt it. Hit it in the crack. There we go. (laughs) Aim for the crack. So yeah, I get a, um, I get, yeah, 20. Cool. That is a hit. Cool. One hit. Kill with fire. I do four damage. (laughs) (laughs) I feel Uh, shame as as a bonus action. (laughs) <laughs> Dis- disappointment and shame <laughs> and then I uh, crawl over to this ballista and then stand up behind it okay is it an active ballista like does it have an arrow in it um, it doesn't have an arrow in it but it looks like it still might work are there arrows lying around there are <gasps> good to know thank you mm. Mm. okay We go next to my gargoyles. They kick their wings, fly up over the battlements. There's this little guy here. Oh. We get one each. You faked you out. You faked you out. You you, you faked me out there. Yeah. (laughs) Sebastian, the, the first one flies down towards you to grab you, getting a 19 to hit. Not even shield will save me now. <gasps> it grabs you underneath the arm, almost pulling your, your oh. shoulder out to dislocate it. Ugh. And it's going to try to lift you into the air. Wait, doesn't he have one more illusion? Roll it. it one more? 11 or higher, and it oh, gets yeah. your Am illusion. I rolling 1d20? Yeah. I get a 17. So Ooh. it grabs the illusion uh, of you, and you just see this illusory Sebastian get chucked over the back. <laughs> And for a brief moment, I go, no! Oh, oh. I scream no, because I'm like, oh my god! And then it just kind of fades away. Yeah. And you look back down, and I'm there like, hey. It I, growls, I'm... and it turns its other other hand to backhand you. In the oh face. no! Now it knows. Getting a 23. Oh, right and it face. smashes you in the face for eight points of slashing damage. And I said, this is what happened in the stories! <laughs> <laughs> Noted. <laughs> Seeing that Paluto might be too heavy for it, this impish-looking gargoyle <laughs> just bears down upon you with its claws. Oh, hi. Getting a 21 and a 13 to hit. Okay. For six points of damage as it lets its claws in around your neck. Veo, the, uh, this devilish-looking, uh, Gargoyle comes down and tries to scoop you up as well. It gets a natural one. Yes. Uh, and then tries to claw you. Uh, going completely wide with a seven to hit. Don't stop. <laughs> so I've seen this it before. flies down. You, you've kind of run up to the tower wall. And as it flies down, you just duck down and its two arms come forward uh, and crash in as masonry flies out from, from the tower walls. And I'm posing as I do it. I'm just like, can't hit me. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Veo, you're up. Um, ooh, it's right up against me. Okay. Um, I cast my last first level spell slot with Zephyr Strike. So I don't have my opportunity attacks. And I run past it along the wall. Okay. Whoop, 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 whoop. So it basically flew down towards you. And I, I imagine that you kind of did like a power slide underneath it as you're casting Zephyr Strike and then running down the wall away from it. And how, how far, far did, did you want to go? Um, Maximum speed. <laughs> <laughs> Maximum speed. I also just don't want to run into this gargoyle as well. Um, so I'd say I, I can go 60 feet. Lure him because then yeah, I start to Do swing it to at him. It. Bye bye. Maybe one. I'll go fifty-five. Um, <clears throat> and I take my two sh- as I power slide. I run and I turn back with my long. Oh. I say, in the crack. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Fail. Critical fail. Oh. Uh, 
Uh, it hits a crack in the wall. Yeah, it hits you wide. <laughs> that was a warning shot. Yeah, yeah. That's the spirit. Oh, no. <laughs> I take my other shot. I only get seven. <laughs> That's enough warning shots. <laughs> yeah, we should probably land some hits. Like, I haven't <laughs> above I'm trying a to, like, run and shoot, and I'm just like, after that power slide, I'm like a bit wobbly, so I'm. I'm it looked shooting, cool, factor though. Wobbly. Yeah, it looked cool. Yeah, super cool. <laughs> Just super ineffective. <laughs> Pluto, it's your turn. Um, I feel like we need to ground ourselves uh, a little bit. Um, what's our tied up to? Am I still tied to Sebastian? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's, there's a about 50 feet of rope between the two of you, and you're still actually attached to the the spike on the wall. Oh down yeah, there. I'm 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 not worried at all. You can try to throw me or you. We're fine. Um, I feel very safe, and that's why I use that feeling of safety to stab the gargoyle. Uh, um, will you accept a 16? I will for uh, 12 damage. This is not, this one actually has no damage on the board at all. Yes. And it's my magical spear. So I hope, does it yeah, help? It does. It, the, the stony elemental hide of the gargoyle has resisted the other weapon damage, but against the magic, it's like flesh. And I want to, for the first time ever, trip attack. Whoa! What do I have to do? Uh, strength save, DC 16. I get knocked prone. And um, ah. he takes an extra <laughs> seven damage. Nice. And then I'm going to start running towards Sebastian. Can I make it to Sebastian? Uh, yeah. Do you want to make another attack? Uh, I will accept the opportunity attack. Okay. If he's prone. Yeah, he, uh, he is prone, but he does make the opportunity to attack with disadvantage. Getting a natural one. <clears throat> and I'm going to run up to Sad. Sebastian and stab this thing in the back. Nice. Actually, I'm going to get... Can I impose myself between... Can I do a... So come up around the side and, and kind of bear your shield up yeah. in front of it and then stab forward with the spear? Yeah. Uh, getting a natural one. <laughs> <laughs> Shield but then I'm gonna shield bash yeah. it. Yeah, we're um, all ones today. Yeah, it's definitely a one, right? Yes. Yeah, that's, that's number one. Sure, like, <laughs> we're, we're number one. one. <laughs> we're number um, God, uh, fourteen. Uh, I gotta make a strength check, correct? Yep. Wow, I get an eight. <laughs> Woohoo! And I'm gonna shove him. Um, Knock him prone or shove him? I'm gonna shove him down. Yeah. Okay. Ah. Batter him to the ground. Everyone's on the ground. Except us. Yeah, uh, yeah no, the anyway. other one is still air, uh, Stupid aloft. flying things. Yep. With that, we go to the top of the round with Sebastian. Um, so seeing this thing on the ground, I'm going to summon from the shadows a <gasps> hound that leaps forward and starts chewing on the gargoyle. Awesome. <laughs> Reaper appears. Reaper appears, and he's going to attack. Nice. And because there's a friendly creature, one of his pack, that's you. <gasps> I see Is him. within five feet. He gets... Uh, Dude's a, also a... prone, so... Oh, yeah. So he, yeah. Okay, fine. I just wanted to use... He's also tactics. laying on the ground. All right. <laughs> 18. That hits. How much damage do you do? Uh, two to six. Cool. Now he's triple prone. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Dog, he does... Dog's pulling I, on him? Yeah. Reaper does six damage, yep. and then Sebastian says, we need to keep these guys grounded, and I cast web on these two. Oh, nice. Um, okay. Where did my web template go? I think it's over here. Ooh, nice sure play. you're not Spider-Man. Yeah, you just climbed a wall and shot a bunch of web on things. <laughs> <laughs> also, you have no hair, so it's like you're in the costume. <laughs> The webs go down. Sebastian. Oh, baby. Okay. Are we 180ing this? Yeah. Are we really turning this fight around? The gargoyles. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
So I have to make strength saving throws or dexterity saving throws? Uh, it's a dexterity saving throw against Webb, and this one has disadvantage because of Reaper. Okay. So the one with disadvantage is super webbed. Yeah. Nice. And the other one uh, gets a 15? 16. Both are webbed. Both are webbed and restrained. So I... Okay. <laughs> That's the web sound. The web. Cool. Um, the one that is stuck oh, in the web gross. will try to break out, but it doesn't. And the other will attack, reach out to... It, it, you're both stuck in there, so it's going to... Yeah, it's going to hammer home the attack on Pluto. It's got to make two attacks with disadvantage. Both of them not over 10 as it tries to slash and grab forward towards Pluto. And both attacks miss. I'm going to repost that. Cool. Uh, 18 for 16 damage. Cool. Oh wait! Don't do I get um advantage? Yeah, on the attack roll. Yeah, it still hits. Not a crit. That leaves it bloodied. Whatever bloody Stab. counts for for an elemental creature. It is leaking gravel. gravel. Yeah, the gravel. Yeah. The rubble is <laughs> It's graveled. It's graveled. Um, <laughs> Talk. The final gargoyle swoops straight forward. It double moves. Uh, it, actually, they have a fly speed of sixty feet, Ooh. so it oh, can fly right up to Veo. That's fast. And uh, it's going to try to scoop her up. No, Veo! Getting a 15 to hit. I have a 15, yeah. 15, okay. So you hit. So we can make opposed strength checks. <gasps> Veo! Oh, man. 15. I get an 8. <laughs> so it try grabs you. It's got you under the shoulders. You're grabbed again. It's it a- tries to lift... <laughs> But but it, you're not squirming going too much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're the cat, like the, the dead cat thing, and then you're just like hanging. <laughs> Some cats really know how to like wiggle out too when you pick them up. Mine does. He does that all the time. But if you ever try to grab like like a someone who's really ticklish under the arms, and they're just like no, it's like that. <laughs> he should have gone for the scruff of the neck. It's true, yeah, and then I would disable like, oh, you in a heartbeat. It's it's my, just... my only weakness. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, though, it is your turn, Bayo. Okay, uh, I still have my Zephyr Strike um, active, so I'm gonna continue to like move for move back. I move thirty feet. Okay, you are still grabbed. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, hmm. Then I'm gonna I'm gonna push back like I did before, almost like with all four of my paws. Okay. Paws. Um, what do I need to roll? Paws. <laughs> uh, Acrobatics versus oh, the athletics. Yeah. Oh man. That's- 26. <laughs> I get an 8. I bet you're Can, missing those gold keep dice Keep using now. those dice. I'm going to start rolling the gold dice again. No! <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm sorry. <laughs> After this fight. After this fight. <laughs> um, so I get out. Uh, and then I'm going to move back my 30 feet. Okay. And I get away. Breaking out. So breaking out was your action and you run back. Great. Actually, you can go- I go behind Pluto? <laughs> yeah. Come on over. <laughs> With that, we go to Paluto. Um, I'm going to keep myself right here with Veo behind me, and I'm just going to start stabbing the uh, gargoyle in the uh, in the web. Why won't you die, masonry? I'm a mason, so I understand how gargoyles die. <laughs> I've it studied it. Uh, I get a 21 to hit for uh, 9 damage. Nice. And uh, I stab it again. Uh, 13 to hit did you roll with advantage because it is restrained (gasps) not a 13 um like a 25 yeah for uh 12 damage nice thank you heavily damaged but still hanging on all those stuck in the webs and then uh i'm just gonna stand there just so I can make sure that Veo and uh, Sebastian are fine. Cool. We go to the top of the round, and there is a sound of twisting metal coming from the tower to the north. And as you look up, you can see that one of the 
the filigree of copper and bronze that's around the tower is pulling itself off the tower into the shape of a small dragon. <laughs> Where? Uh, the um, tower that's, that's um, just the what? edge here. Huh. Well, I haven't killed a dragon before, so this is um, be A dragon of solid... Either copper or brass, whatever that metal is, the top of the that's decorating the top of the tower. Sebastian, it is your turn. Ignoring that, because um, <laughs> that's the smart move. Um, will it take an entire action to load the ballista? Yes. <laughs> His eyes are narrow. <laughs> I do it. Okay. You load the ballista. And I point it in this general direction. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Fear. I. You guys, actually, you see me, like, struggling. I grab one of the bolts, and I'm like, <laughs> And it, like, takes all the strength that I have in me, and I get it. I'm like, ah! Like, get it in place. And then you see me spinning around. I'm like, I'm ready for this thing. Guys, Alrighty. I'm bald and ready. <laughs> seeing that the <laughs> seeing that siege weapon turn around, the gargoyles spring into a panic, and the oh. first the last gargoyle tries to break out, but it cannot. Getting a thirteen, hmm. the oh, first one there that's right <laughs> in front of Pluto, hi, uh, tries to break out, getting a ten, and the last gargoyle. Fl- Kicks its wings back, flies over the webs to attack Sebastian. No! <laughs> no! It's coming right at me! Gets two attacks, getting a critical hit, oh. uh, and a 10. And it doesn't go by me, does it? No, it, it just it flies avoids right me. Over. Darn it. Yeah, just l- Sorry, Sebastian. straight up. Why didn't I foresee this? And comes down, and it takes its claw, and it smashes your head against the side of the crenellation. Oh. You take. Um, you take 12 points of slashing and, I guess, bludgeoning damage and need to make a concentration check for the webs. No, not you. Believe. What'd you get? An eight. The webs fade. No! <laughs> My head! So I get smacked against the wall and it actually dazes me for a minute and the webs just kind of dissolve and I'm now dazed and confused and scared and sad. And bald. And bald. Okay. So many emotions. Is bald an emotion? Yeah, it, and same with glowing eyes. That's an emotion. Glowing eyes as well. Mm-hmm. Also an emotion that I'm feeling. An emotion. Right okay, we go to Veil. Feeling all the emotions. Um, I turn to both of you and I say, are you ready to get out of here? What? <laughs> 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 oh, he's still a little concussed from the... From and the... I uh, go to the edge of the battlement, reach my hand over, and cast Rope Trick uh, across the edge. And... Oh, to let the rope dangle down. Yes. I see. Down, so that way, literally, I kind of grab onto it and scree up, hoping that the other two follow my lead. Okay. Zoop. Wait, where's it? Oh, I guess I can't. <laughs> Oh, can we use one of the flight things? Yeah. <laughs> whoop, whoop. Nice. Oh, and you're you're in there. And I'm in there. Okay. Bluto. Um I I grab the rope that's tied to Sebastian and I pull him up from <laughs> <laughs> From under the gargoyle. Like, you're coming with me. (laughs) All right, make a strength check. Uh, 15. So you yank Sebastian towards you. The the last thing I heard was Veo say, are you guys ready to go yet? And I'm looking at the gargoyle because I think the gargoyle's asking me, are you ready to go yet? I'm like, what gargoyle? I'm not ready to die. I get yanked out. I don't want to go. I'm not ready, gargoyle. And so I'm going to pull him towards me. And mm-hmm. I'm gonna scoop him up. <laughs> scoop him up, little little. We're, we're together now. We're, Every time he takes a potion, he gets scooped. <laughs> <laughs> this is part of yeah. This is part of our training. And I'm gonna jump and grab the uh, 
Oh, you're you're and such like, a hero. Swing down. Yeah. Okay. But I'm going the, down. I I put the ballista in. <laughs> okay. We're ready. Make an athletics check. Because you're trying to swing down this rope one-handed. Uh, will you accept the twenty-six? I will. <laughs> so just you grab this rope, Sebastian, under one hand. You slide down, and just as you get towards the bottom of of, of the walls, you just grab your hand tight enough to stop the fall and land solidly on the superhero on pose. the ground. Yes, total superhero landing. I am. Yeah, feel that. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay, little. And we're still tied together. Yeah. I'm so impressed. Yeah. Ludo, I thought you only yeah, the, used the, like, swords and javelins, not guns. The, the rope has long si- on the other side has long since snapped. <laughs> I want that on a shirt. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Cool. Cool. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's my turn. What a heroic escape. Well, <laughs> cool. are we escaped? <laughs> I pulled you. <laughs> this is why we tie ourselves together. Because we're family. <laughs> okay. Aww. With that, Sebastian, it's your turn. Well, I was going to fire the ballista. Now I'm just embraced in these <laughs> big, still strong arms. you disoriented. Can your dog fire it? Oh, yeah. My dog's still here. <laughs> Make your dog do it. Just go up and be like... Good boy. Uh, the dog is single-minded. It actually was going to attack. Yeah, it should have attacked yeah. last time, but yeah. it didn't. Uh, it... Roll, roll it now. So I'll just I'll do two attacks. Yeah. Cool. No more pack tactics, but it is still prone. Yeah. Wonderful. Good. Seventeen. Yeah. And mm. I'll roll the second attack. Sixteen. Both hit. Nice. nice. Eleven damage. That's actually enough to destroy it. Ooh. Good job, Reaper. Good boy. Oh. I hear I hear like I see bits of rubble flying off and I hear my dog. Does Reaper disappear after it kills the target? I believe so. Like it's okay. its only purpose is to kill the target. So it, it okay. I see like a shadow absorb yeah. back into me. Nice. Like fly I, like, over the wall and like sw- yeah, swoop like, down. Yeah, like little shadows like, I th- it, like what I imagine happened is shadow. that, that as Reaper lands the killing blow, this kind of like dark portal of darkness opens up underneath the Reaper, and Reaper just drags the gargoyle into the oh, hole. Yes, that's so, that's epic. so yes. cool. <laughs> and um, <laughs> to finish the kill in yeah. like another dimension. Yeah. <laughs> and then I turn to Pluto, and I'm like, "Are we leaving? Are we heading out? Do we leave? Should we leave? I'd like to leave." If I tug on the rope, what happens? I just give it like the double tug. The rest of the 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 rope trick or yeah. the the rope trick it just stays in place because Veo's more like secured a, it there magically. Like a signal. The other rope that you were tied to has since snapped off when you leaped Did over. Cool yeah. Move. Okay. Yeah. I'm just gonna hide behind Pluto and okay. just duck, and you're protecting me. All right. With that, um. As you dive down into the city walls, the metal, the sound of the creaking metal stops for a moment, and the gargoyles become still. As they lurch over the wall, seeing you on the ground, they then stop in place. What Before we... we dive back into the ruins, <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I had to make sure there was no food in my beard. There is. Um, okay, good. Um, a big thank you to Axe and Shield for providing us with these awesome gaming accessories. You finally got to see the, uh, mm, cool, the cool flight stands and all of that, as well as the initiative tracker. So check out Axe and Shield. Uh, also, if you are enjoying the ambient music, that is from Tabletop Audio. And we also have a beautiful narration in our intro video from 100 Years Boar. So thank you to him as well. And if you're enjoying the stream and you want to support our work, uh, you can check us out at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. Uh, and of course, uh, the show is sponsored by Skull Splitter Dice. You can check out their truly awesome dice at skullsplitterdice.com. 
uh, which you can use the discount code DDUDES at checkout to save 15% off your entire order. Uh, and of course, um, yeah, we got dice flying all over the place. Those metal dice hitting those miniatures. Nice. So you've gone over the wall. I made it. Beating a hasty retreat into the city proper as the gargoyles that attacked you freeze back into place as silent guardians. What will you do now? I... That was a rocky start. I don't feel great. Um, I'm, I'm in rough shape. <laughs> How long has it been since we... Ed, or we just ended? Because, um, like, we could take a short rest up in the rope trick. Or do you think we need to keep going and you can take some potions? Yeah, you're, you're, you're fine with potions, right? You're used to it now. I have so many potions inside of me right now. <laughs> well, a healing potion... Um, like, am I still glowing effect? and bald? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're fine. Um, I just don't want you to get hit with anything without healing a little bit. Yeah, because we, if we take a short rest... And this is me popping my head out of the rope trick, by the, the way. Because the difference between a short rest and a healing potion for you is just time. Like, you would just get the same, right? Yeah, but I bought those healing potions, but a short rest is free. Well, well time costs is, us... Costs us time. Time is money. Oh, man. Money is the queen. Queen is money. Queen is um, trying to do word association. We should just go. Do you, are you okay to drink a potion? You need to carry me. <laughs> I'll carry you. <laughs> I'll carry you for a little bit. Thank you. How many potions? Uh, do you need a potion? Yeah. I have two. I have two as well. I'm okay. gonna take one of my potions as well. Uh, greater healing. Greater healing is twenty. Twenty. Yeah, like I would love to take a short rest, but I'm, I'm, we need to, we still need to get back to, uh, pick up the, the trail. Yeah. We haven't even figured out this side of it yet. Nope. I say we, um, again travel through those small side streets to make our way back to, out of the reach of the rangers, but I want to see if I can pick up the trail on, uh, um the road shepherd's shepherd's way we're looking for uh wagon tracks and um big footprints left by uh our undead ogre friend mm -hmm. okay so let us look at our maps i'm pretty good at survival you've crossed the wall basically at that area between where the six marking the rat's nest is and where the word middle ward is, that section of wall is where you crossed over, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So you're only a, a short, a few hundred feet from the barracks, um, like less than half a mile. Um, so you'll need to either head up through the side streets or along the wall and you want to make your way for Shepherd's Way to see if you can pick up the trail there. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I yep. could see us making our way like along yep. the wall yep. until we get to the closest section to five and then heading through the side streets to cut across and out further from Shepherd's Gate. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So you take the route that Veo has plotted out for you all. Um, I will get all of you to roll me a d6, please. Ooh. Oh, I'm also, like, taking off the rope and... Yeah. Yeah. A three. A five. A one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the dream. I can't afford a combat. Alrighty. As you proceed along... The way. Through the middle ward, crossing one of the major streets of the theater, the theater row. Mm -hmm. Veo, you see along this main street here, you can hear it first. 
through several large thumping steps. Hmm. And kind of this low <laughs> and then the sound of a small whine like that of a dying knoll. And I I'm assuming I'm leading this party. <laughs> I put my arm out to get you to stop. I stopped. <laughs> um is it coming from ahead of me or is it like around a corner where I can't see it? It's on the main street here. Okay. And I I point to an alleyway. I say hide. I shuffle into the alleyway. Clunk, clunk, okay. clunk, clunk. Make a stealth check. Here I go being stealthy again. Well, let's see. Disadvantage, and I have to roll better than a three. Or worse than a three. Um, two? Okay. Did you oh, clunk your way uh, uh, four. into the alleyway much better. <laughs> Veo, uh, um, Veo, you can see <clears throat> and you go to get a better look. You can see there are three hulking bestial figures in the street amidst a mound of slain gnolls. Three figures each stand about 12 feet tall. Two of them are carrying massive great axes and wear light bits of chain mail over their chests. And as they, they turn around, they are on hoofed legs and there's fur covering them head to toe, a thick mane of bovine-like fur over their heads and shoulders. They have these large bull-like faces with great tusks. A third one is swaddled in a cloak and is carrying, like a crossbow, a bastila. <laughs> I make this kind of like... Uh, and I, do I know what they are? You do. These are the minotaurs that yeah. typically dwell in Old Town. It's extremely uncommon, uh, i.e. Monty had to roll really low for them to be encountered out this far. <laughs> but here they are indeed. And have they seen us? One of them sniffs thickly in the air. You can see the the ring-like piercing around its nostrils as it smells the air around it. Pluto, keep it down. <laughs> so loud. I turn to the other two and I say, is there anything we can do to distract them? Yes. What can we do? Minor illusion. Yes. We need to get their attention elsewhere. And now. Run. Now. Okay. Do it. Um, <clears throat> can you do a smell? I can do a sound. No smell? No. Sound or sight? Um, you said now? Am I going? Yeah. Am I doing it? Go. Um, I, I creep up to the corner of the building that we're behind, mm -hmm. and I just like take a quick glance, and I'm going to try to minor illusion the opposite way from us. And um, from one of the buildings nearby, I'm going to have a voice go, Help me! Okay, make a stealth check first to keep your position hidden. Twenty-two. Okay, now make a deception check. Thirteen. The sound of someone crying for help causes the three massive minotaurs to turn their gaze they take their axes 
and the other one sets a bolt into its crossbow, and they begin walking towards the home where you caused the sound to emanate from. Their heavy footsteps and the clanking of their own armor as they head forward. Pluto, walk at the same pace as them, and we're gonna we're gonna get out of here. <laughs> wow, that's a good idea. Like thunder steps. Like yeah, I'm ti- I'm timing it. Like womp, womp, womp. Okay. Womp. I'm like, okay, me too. And I make right. no noise as I'm walking. <laughs> you can all make stealth checks. Pluto, because you're trying really hard to match this, you don't have a disadvantage on this check. <gasps> and I am trying really hard, so I appreciate that. 29. 7. 22. <laughs> well, I got, fortunately, a 6 on my perception check. Oh, God. <laughs> Pluto takes like one step out of sync like you start off in sync and then all of a sudden it's like thump 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 and it's just like no Pluto I don't know how to walk (laughs) okay it's hard (laughs) you cross the street having successfully and you at that point what do you do run away break into a sprint (laughs) okay and run okay we're just like sneak 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 okay And I'm still doing my run where I'm, again, I still, I run ahead and I, then I sit and I wait for them to catch up and then I run ahead a little bit more. What were those? Uh, Minotaurs and they, you do not want to mess with them. They talked about Minotaurs being near the castle. What are they doing all the way out here? I have a feeling that these paladins are stirring up trouble and it's causing a lot of ruckus with the monsters in the city. So what you're saying is we should blow up the paladins. Well, actually, no. <laughs> you kind of put that together yourself. Uh, <laughs> I say we'd be very careful about traversing even the edges of the city right now with all this extra chaos. What were they killing? Knolls. Knolls. And oh. we still don't want to come across them. So if we're... There's the a enemy of, of my enemy is my friend. I don't think that's the case uh, in this one. I think uh, yeah. the enemy of my enemy is a bigger enemy that will squish us. Uh, that makes way more sense. Definitely. And they have horns and they hurt. It's not the first time I've been, you know, stabbed by a minotaur horn. Until I get a nappy nap, I'm not fighting any minotaurs. <laughs> this is true. I, uh, I'm going to have to kill at least one minotaur before I leave. Yeah. Or it's not even worth we it. We could manage Not it. today, though, Pluto. Yeah. Not today. Maybe later today? Uh, once again. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> okay. We okay. need to find the queen today. We need to find uh, any... We got to get back on the track on the trail yeah. of Oscar. We need to find okay. the trail and at least if we can find where he is, then we can scout him out and wait because we do have two more days. We could take a rest <clears throat> camped out wherever he is, hopefully, and like take turns watching for if he shows up or leaves. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, definitely. Okay. Which way do you go? You continue towards Shepherd's Way? Uh, continue towards Shepherd's Way until we get... Um, I would say almost around the corner and then we want to jut off uh, away from the entrance of Shepherd's Way before we reach there into some of the side streets. Okay, so basically um, halfway between the gate and Market Street? Yes. Or much closer to the barracks than that. Didn't we go down to the bottom? We were down to the bottom and then we traveled north. Yeah, so you wanted to head up here, though, right? Yes, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, yeah, halfway up Shepherd's Way yes. to Market Street. Exactly. Okay. Heading through the back alleys of the Middle Ward, past the theater district, and all the buildings, tenement houses, and in its heyday, several rather prominent brothels. Um... Well, you know, gargoyle crack. Actors have know. to make a living somehow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> the arts, yeah, because because they're not making it from their little place. Um, <laughs> gonna do some side work. I get it. I get side it. hustle, if you will. Um, don't quit your day job. Um. You head towards Shepherd's Way, reaching the street from one of the side alleys. Shepherd's Way, of course, being a very major thoroughfare into Drakenheim. And this part 
as you reach the closer parts of the city, Shepherd's Way is covered with a measure of mud, but it is a cobblestone street at this point. So tracking something along the this path is possible, but difficult. Vale, as you come to the street, it is largely deserted. There's a few distant sounds of screams and barks, the light rain pitter-pattering along the leering buildings of Shepherd's Way. You can uh, give me a uh, survival or perception check to, or survival, perception, or investigation, whichever you prefer to try to pick up this trail again. Can I help her to give her an, an advantage or at least a bonus? Because I'm proficient in survival. Sure. I'm yeah. proficient in investigation. Okay. I'm going to do perception. Then all three of you can uh, get, uh, give me a different check. So survival, investigation, and perception. And let's see how we do. 18. I only got an eight. 17. Okay. So the three of you head into the street and look around looking for signs of the wagon trail. Pluto, you think you might have found something, but very quickly, Sebastian and Veo, you realize that while there are wagon trails going along this way, there's no, first of all, nothing recent and nothing quite, there's no signs of the footsteps of something pulling the wagon. Mm-hmm. Now, what we do know is that he came through the gate, right? Yes. Or at least we can assume. What if he broke off quickly after? That means that we, need- we maybe we need to backtrack towards the gate. And if maybe one of us goes, like maybe Veo, you go alone. Yeah, I can do that. And be sneaky and look. You could maybe pick up the trail that way. Yeah. Meanwhile, me and Pluto will build disguises out of more theater district stuff. (laughs) (laughs) I I rummage through brothels. (laughs) Don't stray too far. (laughs) (laughs) Looking for something fancy to wear. There are... There is a rather prominent brothel in the in the area here that uh, used to be called the Purple Veil, um, and the remains of its occupants are still scattered about. Um, there's a wide veranda marking the entrance to it, and you could gather together some scraps of clothing, but many of the brothels and the inns in this area have been rather picked over for one reason. The brothels and the inns had alcohol. Oh. So many things of value have been taken from them. Although, you can give me a survival check, and let's see if you'd manage to find something. We have alcohol. Five. Five? (laughs) (laughs) You spent about 30 minutes rifling through the purple veil. I didn't even find a purple veil. <laughs> Such a disappointment. There's bits of an old brazier <laughs> and some lacy pantyhose and some dresses, various skirts, some nobles outfits from a few people. There's some playing cards. I make a mask out I of take all the of playing those. cards. It's not a, fit, a full set. That's fine. But you're able to mash one together from several different sets. Find something nice for the rap prints. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one of those skirts. Yeah, all of this is mm. for him. This this Nothing whole yet. way, many of the buildings along Shepherd's Way, as it's one of the, the Hooded Lantern's primary patrol zones, the Hooded Lanterns have stripped them from value, uh, most things of value, and even for the Hooded Lanterns, articles of clothing are valuable just for what they can use to patch together things to wear and anything. So while there are bits and pieces of things here and there, there's very little left. Understandable. And I'm going to slink my way back through some of the back alleys in to get closer to the gate in order to see if I can see where the trail went, whether it went straight or whether it went off Mm -hmm. towards one of the directions. Proceeding along the south side, um, 
are you taking the rooftops? Are you taking the streets? How are you proceeding? Are you you guys are waiting back at the brothel, right? The, yeah. Um, what what does the light look like right now? It's uh, it's around four in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. So there's a good level of light. It's overcast and light rain. So visibility is probably about three hundred to four hundred feet. Um. And how tall are the buildings? Most of the buildings around Shepherd's Way are one or two stories tops. Mm. With the barracks itself, it, its highest tower is about 80 feet tall. Mm. And so it has a very good view of the area around here. Let's probably take the streets then, only because even if I'm on the tops, the lanterns will probably see me. So okay. I want to slink down in the, the shadowiest of alleyways that I can find. Okay. Heading down the wide Shepherd's Way, following the, the back alleys along it, you come to the barracks. Again, it's inside the city walls. It's its own set of courtyard walls, which abut the main city walls. And then there is a small kind of sortie gate beside the main gate of the city that leads from the city gate or Shepherd's Way into the barracks. And then the barracks itself has its own main gate off to the side and then its own keep and buildings inside its own courtyard. You can see that many of the hooded lanterns are still on patrol in the area. You catch sight of several of them watching on the walls, both out towards the city prop, the outskirts of the city and inside the city too. Um, and as you've followed along these the, this way, there is right up along Shepherd's Way, there is no sign of Oscar's wagon along Shepherd's Way until you get close to the gate Mm -hmm. where you can see what might be the trail. Give me a perception check. Twenty-one. Okay. You first look towards the gate where you can see very clearly the impression of a recent set of wagon tracks moving along in the mud. The tracks stop by the sortie gate and then continue along Shepherd's Way past the barracks, then turn up along the side street, which runs along the barracks walls Mm -hmm. the the inner walls of the barracks uh in the in the northward direction where the other set of barracks gates are okay um and i see them go off into the side street yeah okay i run back to get the rest of the group i say (laughs) i'm trying on some clothes (laughs) i found (laughs) It goes along when the side of the barracks. <laughs> I'm like, Pluto, <laughs> it's a good color on you. I'd Thank like you. to think that I've found a nobleman's suit, Ooh. and now I'm, I am look—I don't even look like Sebastian Crow anymore. I, I'm bald, glowing purple eyes, with a nice suit and a monocle. That's a rather convincing disguise. In fact, when you see him, you don't quite recognize him. Who are you? I'm Pl- working on that. Pluto, who is this? Oh, I'm Jesus. Sebastian Crow. Wait. <laughs> I want the new we line. Could, wait, hold Sebastian, on. Sebastian, you don't even look like yourself. Okay. If we you look find like a out rich that guy. if we find out that he's gone back into the Hooded Lantern's base, I can knock on their door, pretending to be somebody else, and tell them I have an appointment with Oscar. But then they're gonna wonder how you got into the city. Yeah, they're like, well, I who are have you? My ways. <laughs> I'm I'm worried. Look, about... I have a monocle. My name is Cornelius Mortimer Bigsby, <laughs> and I have an appointment with Oscar Yorn. Hmm? 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 Plan I'm, I'm D. I'm honestly I'm sold. Plan D. Are you sure it's not Plan A? No. I'm really good at lying. Let's see, okay, so... the, let's see where the tracks go. Actually, <laughs> let's get a bit closer to that, and then. Um, the only thing I'm worried about is Pluto, your your how loud clunking you are. I don't even remember the name I just said. 
Something Mortimer. Cor- Cornelius. You know, like Cornelius. Mortimer. Mortimer Bigsby. Bigsby. <laughs> right there. <now. laughs> CMB. Oh, it's too bad. I. I'm too bad. I'm out of magic because I have disguise self. <laughs> um, Cornelius. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay, it's working. You're getting into character. I say if we get caught, definitely. Uh, we'll put you first, and we'll try to hide. Sound good, Pluto? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll try to hold up the the back end. Because I don't want to go traversing around to find the tracks if uh, if it leads me off and I can't come back and get you. So I'm even wondering if um, still stay a little bit of a distance away and we'll see where they go. And then uh, I'll come back and get you every time we find out. Indubitably. Okay. <laughs> I'm already... <laughs> regretting this. <laughs> okay. I'm excited. So you're going to head along the northern edge of Shepherd's Way yeah. towards the cane as well. collecting them and bringing them back this way. Mm-hmm. Indeed. You have a wand. You're a wand guy. You pull no, them through the side streets along the northern edge of Shepherd's Way towards the main gate to the barracks. And it's at this moment that, you're, that your heart sinks for the wagon trail goes into the Hooded Lantern's barracks. Son of a biscuit. Guys, it's time for Cornelius. <laughs> Sorry, Bale. <Bail. laughs> it's just I've been around I'm you for so long. I'm on you. <laughs> um, yeah, I think... Uh, yeah, Cornelius may need to... <laughs> come out. <laughs> What's the worst that could happen, right? Well, no. uh, <laughs> Lots of worse things. Um, okay, let's, let's just sure up some of your backstory. Where were you born? I was born here in... Nope. I was born <laughs> in Illyria. And uh, who is your mom and dad? My mother was Mortimer <laughs> Cornelius Bigsby. <laughs> I never knew my mother. That's my father's name. Sorry. I'll give you your mom. It's good. So you're, Mor- you're Mortimer C- Cornelius Mortimer Bigsby the second. I'm... Yes. yes. Cornelius yes. Mortimer Bigsby the second. My you- father was also... Cornelius Mortimer Bigsby, but he was the first. And and what was his profession? He was a potions inspector. <laughs> <laughs> and what brings you to Drakenheim? I am here investigating strange potions. <laughs> I've heard that there's quite a brew here in <laughs> in Drakenheim. Well, you know what? You've convinced me. So <laughs> I feel like we Oscar because he makes the potions. Exactly. <laughs> And how do you know Oscar's here? Word travels in these parts, <laughs> and I've heard that he makes the best delirium potions this side of Illyria. <laughs> yes. Well, um, Veo? <laughs> I mean, I guess it's moving from plan D to plan A. <laughs> <laughs> it just got bumped up a whole, like, four <laughs> notches. That goes from, like, almost a fail to, like, like above average. All right. <laughs> wow. This is probably one of our better plans, to be honest. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, Pluto, we're gonna hide and we're gonna oh, listen. Oh gosh. And see if we can. <laughs> if we need to get him out of there, then we will. But you, do you have an escape plan? I no. Really wish I had I really Cornelius wish... needs no escape plan. He's a man of dignity. Oh wait, question. Do you have? Oh, the delirium potions don't work on me. <laughs> I was like, do you want me to get a spell slot back and I can disguise myself and I can come in with you? But no. Um, Actually, well. Do you have. Okay, we need to come up with a safe word. What's your safe word? <laughs> pork that you chops! Can, pork <laughs> chops. That might give us away. Pork chop sandwiches. What's, do you have any pork chop sandwiches? <laughs> really boom it. Really yes, get I, it I loud. Will. All right. <laughs> Guys, stay back. All right. We're going to do this. Um, I walk up to the door of the barracks. How close can we be the, without... The main gate of the, the barracks? As soon as you step out of the alley, someone will see you. And how co- how close can me and Veo be? Can we be watching from like a window, from a close-by shop? Oh, or yeah. Like yeah. A- yeah. Can we use the monocle? <laughs> <laughs> this is my monocle. It's part of my disguise. <laughs> so, Sebastian, we're you're wearing your goggles. disguise, but what are you keeping on your person? My wand. Okay. Is in my back pocket, Tell and um. Tell me to hold your bag of holding. Oh, what about yeah, your rings? I'm still wearing my rings. Okay. Um. 
Do you I wanna... turn the Drakenheim one inside so that it's... That's the queen's ring, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I turn that one <laughs> inside so that it just looks like a band. The actual symbol is on the inside of my hand. Okay. And now it just looks like a, a gold band that I'm wearing. I'm okay. married. Okay. Oh, oh, who's your wife's name? What's your wife's name? Ooh. Cornelia. <laughs> um, <laughs> Kathy. <laughs> Kathy Connie. Bigsby. Connie, Connie, Connie Bigsby. Connie. <laughs> <laughs> what did you write? Wilma Rhubarb? <laughs> <laughs> Wilma <laughs> Bigsby. <laughs> it was a surprise. These are, these are pretty... Uh, in, in your defense, these are pretty Illyrian names. <laughs> so, right. so sorry I gave that away. By the way, if I, I start laughing it. during this, I swear Sebastian is not laughing. I'm just I'm going to do my best. All right. We'll we'll uh we'll see how good your deception checks end up being. Okay. So I walk up to I walk out of the alley with uh, my wand, a nice suit, a monocle, bald head. <laughs> well, it, it, yeah. It's are, are you going so the the suit that you found was basically on a corpse. Yeah. So it looks roughed up. Yes. Okay. So you stumble out into the alleyway <laughs> and immediately there is a reaction from the hooded lanterns manning the, the gate. The gate is open right now and there's two of the hooded lanterns are there with their crossbow, one with a crossbow, one with a spear and shield. And as you approach the one lowers it uh he holds his shield forward they don't aim their weapons at you um but they say you there bald man what are you doing oh thank god other humans or elf or other humanoids it's been a rough walk through drakenheim this morning <laughs> who are you what are you doing here in the on this side of the city. Ah, my name is Cornelius Mortimer Bigsby. I am in search of wonderful potions. They eye you up and down, make a deception check with advantage. Nineteen. They look at you, they see your glowing eyes and like the traces of the delirium going and one of them turns to the other and says, this man's mad. He's suffering from delirium sickness. My good sir. Quickly. And they, they come towards you and and one of them yells out, quickly, get blankets. No, no, call, no. Uh, 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 that won't call the necessary. hospice, the medics. We, we've got someone that's very, very ill. I'm looking for Oscar Yorn. As you say that name, they stop. I came from Illyria. My father, Mortimer... <laughs> Cornelius Mortimer Bigsby I was a potions inspector. His dying words were, you'll never find potions quite like the ones in Drakenheim. I've gone searching for the greatest potions ever. I've, I've heard that they've made potions out of delirium. I've been walking through Drakenheim for a few days, hence why my clothes are so tattered. I ran into a few different crazy creatures, but a little rat told me that Oscar Yorn makes the greatest delirium potions in all of Drakenheim. So I've been wandering around looking for him. They, I was led here. They look back at each other and they, they, the two guards, both with their, their helmets and cloaks down, they say... Sir, we can help you find Oscar Yorin, but you're you're safe here. You're welcome. You can come in, and we'll 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 have to talk to our captain uh, on, on on the watch. We'll get you the help that you need. You're you look very very ill. Oh, I'm quite fine, thank you. Why are your eyes glowing? Well, you see, I've been testing my own delirium potions. They've worked wonders. By the gods. All right. Are you are you armed? Do you have spells? I know a few. I've dabbled in a, a wee bit of magic. All right. Well, you can come in and and we'll we'll, we'll see to you right, right away. Come. Come on in. Wonderful. 
Oh, God. Um, I, I glance over my shoulder at where they're hiding. I'm just like... <laughs> we're like, go, oh, go. We're just kind of peeking and they, over they, like they the corner. And they call out, Captain, Captain, we've... we've an, another has come in from the city and stepping into uh, out from one of the guard towers is Petra. Mm-hmm. Oh. Um, she She steps down and she looks at the other two and she's like, this is just a crazy day. I'm sorry, sir. Make a deception check because Petra see, sees you. Still with advantage? Yeah. Twenty six. She she stops for a moment. She says, "My name is Petra. I'm one of the captains of the Hooded Lanterns here. I'm manning the garrison right now. You're under my protection. We can help you with whatever you need. You were in the city. You were wandering around. Oh, Are just, you all right? Of course, I'm all right. How did you?" I'm going to bring you to the infirmary right away, and we'll see to it that you're you're taken care of. I'm, Come with. I'm I'm very healthy, actually. I the, I'm in good health right now. I I've, I'm just here to speak to Oscar Mr. Yorin. You're looking for Oscar Yorin? Yes, I understand he's the greatest potions maker in Drakenheim. I was told to go to him to buy potions. He wasn't at his home, so I've been wandering through Drakenheim looking for him, and a little rat told me that he might be here. That she grabs you, pulls you close. How do you know that name? Like I said, his, 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 he's the greatest potions creator in all of Drakenheim. <laughs> Everybody knows to go to Oscar for potions. Health potions? Why did you come here? Like I said, a little rat told me. I've been wandering in the city looking for clues. What rat? The rats speak in Drakenheim. Yes. One of them. I didn't ask its name. I just called it rat. I didn't think to ask a rat its name. I've never seen a talking rat before, but... Come with me. She brings you into the barracks courtyard. She turns to the other two guards. Keep an eye out. And she brings you into the barracks. Veo, Pluto. How do you react? Well, we can always find a new sorcerer. Like it's. (laughs) (laughs) We'll start. I'll put up posters tomorrow. You're doing wonders. <laughs> I don't know keep, where my keep plan going. goes from here. Keep going. I'm Remember your wife. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go home to my wife. <laughs> Wilma. <laughs> Do it for Wilma. Um, um, I turn to you and I say, well, are they just going to kick us out right away if we go in there? I mean, they know us. They didn't let us through, but they didn't say we couldn't be in the city. Yeah, and what if we... Can you think of any reason why maybe we're looking for Cornelius? It could be. Is a, he like we your could, cousin from a far away? <laughs> he's from Illyria. Maybe he's um. Maybe he's working with the. The the maybe we recruited him. No, I feel like Petra's gonna be mad at us if she sees us. I th- I think if anything, we have to kind of play it out, and. I think What's Sebastian. your story for where Sebastian is? Yeah, I'm wondering if we should we wait. Like, should we be ready? I think we should wait. Um, if anything, is there you a, might have to be the one that goes in. I mean, I'm wondering if there's even a better vantage point for being able to like see through the gate rather than being on a side street, like in one of them. There, houses. the only possible place where you could see over into the courtyard mm-hmm. would be on the walls themselves. There's no build around the the city barracks. There are no buildings that are higher than the walls of the barracks. I mean, uh, are you going up? When I look around, if I were to climb on part of the wall, is there a vantage point where I am cutting off the view from the other? Is she exposed? There's a few possible places yeah. that you could do that. You'd have to be very fast. Hey, that's like that's you. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> You could climb up one of the latrine chutes. 
I mean, I would do it. Yeah. <laughs> You're, it, it's actually a pretty normal I'm smell. I'm just more like, I, I kind of scout my eyes around and I find like the best vantage point for me to just like scoot up and just like keep mm-hmm. an eye out. It would be a, on one of the intersections between the, uh, like, it would be along one of the, the sides of the walls. You'd have to scan for when the guards patrol properly because... <laughs> Anywhere, there's always going to be someone that's going to be able to see you skirt, skirting up the walls. Okay. So you're going to have to move fast mm-hmm. and quick because there's nowhere to hide when you're climbing up the walls. You're just relying on not being seen when you go up, okay. which is why along one of the sets of towers, um, going down into a ditch over a pseudorain, there is a set of latrine tunnels come out of the walls so you could try climbing up one of those yeah i mean i'm already a smelly cat to be honest yeah um how wide are they they are maybe they're like a a little chimney no wider than maybe 18 to 12 inches like you're going to be squishing to climb up this thing I don't see any other way around this, Pluto. <laughs> well, right now, he's on his own. So we need to do something. If you think that's a good call, I'm with you. I just don't know. I can stay here, but I feel like I'm not able to. I'd rather take the risk of getting somewhere where I can at least run away if I get caught rather than being stuck in somewhere. Do you have a disguise? I'm out of spell slots. What about... No, because I don't want them to attack you. At least if you're Veo, they won't attack you. They might just be mad at you. Cross our fingers, yeah. Um, I'm um, gonna. I guess I can stay out here. And what's what's your distraction work? What's your um? You're in a lot of trouble, and no matter what, you need help. Uh, word. Um, haddock. 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 Okay, I'll be listening quietly. It's one of my faves. Okay. All right, Veo. As you s- scurry towards <laughs> now I'm the latrine ch- uh, tunnel, roll initiative. Okay. Uh, Thirteen. Okay. One of the patrolling guards, you wait for the moment when they both have turned their backs away from the tunnel and you rush towards it and begin climbing up. You are... Scurry across. You'll need to use your feline agility to get this far. Yep. Scurry across. Make an acrobatics check to squish your way through. 20. Okay. You almost have to pull your shoulders in and your hands in because there's barely any room and it smells. Can I like dislocate my shoulder and just be like... Almost as you proceed and squish your way up in a way that only a feline like creature can kind of like, cause your bones are just soft enough to do this as you Grinch climb up. Chimney. You know, like when cats yeah. go into like really small boxes and you're like, how did you get in that or box? You, like, they go into yeah. like a doorway and you're like, how did you get under that doorway? Like yeah. your hips shouldn't be. And you're like, yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> I made it. So you begin climbing up into the barracks latrine <laughs> of one of the towers. Meanwhile, Sebastian Cornelius, <laughs> You are in the courtyard <laughs> as Petra leads you across the courtyard. There's the main there's the main keep of the bar- the the barracks, the blacksmith, the stables, the archery field, their various armories. And you can see parked off the stables is the large wagon that you've been trailing. Is the ogre there too? The zombie ogre? It's not. Good. Um Petra leads you into the keep towards the brig. She turns to you and she she says, I can bring you to one of two places. I can bring you to the infirmary or I can bring you to the cells. You're looking for Oscar Yorin. Why would I be put in a cell and why do I why am I being forced medical attention? <laughs> How do you know 
you're serious that a little rat told you that Oscar Yorin was here? What reason would I have to lie? I'm just a wanderer. I, I've been wandering around Illyria, Caspia, Drakenheim, looking for the greatest potions. Here, look. And I, I'm actually going to pull out one of the purple potions. And I'm like, this is one that I created. She grabs the potion. Excuse and- me. I was showing you that. I, Where did you get this? I made it. Make another deception check. Still with advantage? Yeah. Twenty-two. Wow. What does it do? I've only done a few field tests with uh, with such potent potions, but. It appears that it has the capacity to empower one's spellcasting abilities. Neat. Can I have it back? It's 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 a sample. Fine. It's the only one I have. Thank you. I I don't mean to be any trouble. I I just I came to Drakenheim. You're dropping this name, Oscar Yorin. Yes. Acting as if you know he's here for a fact. No, I'm just following a lead. I I. I would like, like, is he here? (laughs) You haven't said so. You just brought me inside as soon as I mentioned his name. I don't know what's going on. She says, I'm very sorry if Oscar Yorin's one of your friends. He was selling us potions for a long time, but... So you do know him. But just the other day we went by his, his manor and it had been destroyed. We think he's dead. Oh no! What? Did you retrieve his body? No, there was nothing. I'm sorry. So what? What leads you to believe he's dead? Is is it possibly could have left? I have. We don't know. He was supplying us with potions for quite some time, but since the a few days ago. His whole place looked like it had just been ransacked. There's a lot of bandits and people, and we've been trying to protect him while we could, but it's hard to survive in this city. Do I detect any sort of lies or anything from her? Uh, What's your bonus to insight? Insight, I have... Oh, no bonus. Not very wisdom You don't know Petra very well. But it's really hard to get a read on her. Hmm. Well, that's that's very tragic. Uh, I guess I will have to find somewhere else to... Uh, to continue my research. You're welcome to stay here. If you would like. We can... We have people that can see to your medical needs. If you need any... And perhaps our commander's very, very busy, but if you can make these potions indeed, perhaps we can come to some sort of accord over them. It's a very dangerous time to be here in the city. We're about to participate in a major, major offensive operation shortly. Oh my. What sort of offensive operation? Sounds dangerous. I really can't say any information about that of course, but of course. it's probably for the best if you stay here for a couple days or that you leave the city i i could swing by the uh the infirmary um i don't know if i need medical inten- attention but you know it's always good to get checked up on uh, okay my my plan just to elaborate is i want to look for any signs of like like kind of peer through doorways as we're going i kind of just want to see if there's anywhere where i think they may have like mm. i don't believe her that oscar yorn is dead i believe okay. that oscar yorn is here and i'm trying to like look for clues okay as i'm being led around the barracks yeah detective sure um, she says, very well. Um, so you want to ask her to lead you around the barracks? 
Or what do you want well, to like, say to her? If if she she offered to take me to the infirmary. Yes, she did. So I said I, I could swing by the infirmary. But while she's leading me there, mm-hmm. I'm going to look at whatever we walk by to look for possible sure. clues. She leads you through the fortress, past the meeting halls where, and the great hall where you've been before, uh, out to the in, infirmary wing, where it seems like it's a combination of what would have been a barracks and is where they're treating several wounded. There's about a dozen hooded lanterns in here in various states of consciousness and wounds. Some of them as much as missing limbs, some suffering from delirium sickness, others completely unconscious and on the verge of death, shaking and shivering. She points to one of the cots and says, if you'd like to take this and have a sleep or anything like that, one of us will fetch you some water. I have uh, some other work to attend to, but if you need to leave here, just talk to the guards and they'll lead you wherever you need to go. You're welcome to come and go between the infirmary and the great hall and the courtyard, but everywhere else is off limits. Our security is very tight right now because we're on the midst of this offensive. I understand. Is that man going to be okay? I point to like one of the... Please keep your voice down. I'm, I'm just, Okay, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> did I see anything on my way over? Like anything of no, notability? No. 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 We go to Veo. She's sitting on a cot. Climbing up the latrine. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, you climb up the latrine, the latrine pipe, and you are now in the latrine of one of the tower buildings. <laughs> uh, you are covered in filth, yep. and you smell really bad. Yum. But you are in, I, I believe this is called a Gardevoir. Um, I'm probably not pronouncing that correctly, but it, it is the the technical term for where the the poop shoot of the castle <laughs> um <laughs> that's french <laughs> um where will you go from here where is it in relation to the rest of the building great question you are in the south wing the southern kind of the southern tower of the Barracks. So I'm in the barracks. You're in one of the towers of the walls. Okay. The keep, you need to head through the walls to the other side to get to the keep proper. Um, I come out of the latrine and I want to kind of look out and see if there's anything. <laughs> of like a toilet? <laughs> of a toilet. <laughs> I want to look around. <laughs> It's a small closet like room with a single door and a board and like there's like a board just over top of it. Uh and there's a um a, a, there's a few rags scattered about and some straw. Okay. Is um I, I come out and I go is there's a is there a locking door? It's kind of like a latch style door from one side, yeah. Okay. And is there any sort of cracks in the door that i can look out of oh yeah yeah you could look okay. underneath the door okay yeah. so i lock it okay <laughs> um and i crouch down and i i want to see like if there's anything that i can see outwardly the hallway is clear okay um <laughs> i open the door and i stick my head out okay you're in one of the bastion towers of the hooded lanterns barracks there, the the room that you're in is kind of one of the um, the off-duty guard rooms. So there's a few cots scattered about here, some a uh, few chests of some extra ammunition and weapons, and a spiral staircase that goes up to the level above and down below as well. Um, and then there's several arrow slits al- along the walls here, which are all closed up. If I Knowing where I am, do I know if leading up will lead me to anywhere that will give me a vantage point? Leading up, if you take the spiral staircase up, mm-hmm. that will eventually lead you to the trap door, which le- which looks out on the tower. It's not the highest tower, it's not the keep, mm-hmm. but it's one of the higher ones that'll let you look down over the courtyard. Okay, and then going down, if I'm looking, where would that lead me out to? Potentially a doorway on the inside of the courtyard. Mm-hmm. 
you don't really know the layout of the Hooded Lantern's barracks. Okay. So going up or down, you know, up is probably going to take you to a landing and down might take you to an exit. It is a tower after all. I'm going to go up because I want to get a good vantage point about where I am. And again, I can always scale down the wall okay. with my claws if I need to. Um, so I go up. Okay. You head up to the top and you can hear the light pitter patter of rain. Make a stealth check. Oh, 12. Okay. So you head up the stairs. The rain that's coming down because the spiral goes up and the trap door at the top is open. Mm -hmm. The rain has made the steps slick and you slip, bang yourself and meow. Meow. And you hear a voice from the top of the top battlements of the tower say, what's that? And he starts heading down towards the stairs. It seems like there are two guards at least at the very top of the battlements up here. I run back to the bathroom <laughs> <laughs> at full clip at full clip well okay. actually you know what not quite full I want to like tiptoe because I'm like really aware of like falling mm-hmm. again on the water but I want to like scurry as quickly as I can okay so if you tr- want to try to do so quietly mm-hmm. you can make a stealth check with disadvantage 18 Okay, so you scurry down the, the stairs as quickly as, as you can. Um, and the just as the guard, you, you hear the footsteps of the guard heading down the stairs a little bit. It's like... Uh, I don't know. I thought I heard something for sure. And he says to... Rudolph, I'm going to just head down to the guard room and just, just see what that was. Sound like something was falling down the stairs or something. He says, All right, sir. Head on down. I'll keep a lookout up here. So you head down the stairs back to the guard room, and you hear the steps of another guard heading down the stairs, one of the hooded lanterns. And I'm in the, wa- I'm in the bathroom, the yeah. latrine? Yeah. Okay, and I lock the door. Yeah. Um... Do they come up to the door or do they walk past and keep going down the stairs? He walks down. He sees nothing in the guard room. It's like, is that water down here? He sees, he says to himself, it looks like watery paw prints. And he walks towards the latrine door puts his hand on it and tries to open it up. And he knocks. He says, who's in there? I say, is it, did I hear it was Rudolph or Rudolph was the one up above? Didn't hear his name, no. Oh, okay. Um, I say, oh, don't come in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, make a deception check. Okay. Twenty-three. Oh, you really sold the. He oh. says. <laughs> he says, Alicia, is that you? Yes. Oh, but... you got the runs again, don't you? I'm so sorry. Bad girl. Just... <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting you for your the change of the guard, but you just just let it go out. Take your time. I'll I'll, I'll keep your shift. I'll be back upstairs. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> With that, we head back to Sebastian. What about Pluto? Oh right, yeah, Pluto. What are you doing? And so they both headed inside. You're you're on your own completely. And I'm panicking. <laughs> I'm pacing in this little room. And do I see any movement? Do I see any activity happening? Anything different? No. The 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 guards that were at the front have taken their posts back up again. You saw Veo rush back in, and you saw Sebastian go in as his disguise. This is a three-way split, you guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> and and I start to have flashbacks of rat food. 
<laughs> and my my people who I led to their <laughs> demise. And I start worrying and I start panicking and I get this idea. Maybe they need a distraction. Maybe they need a way out. And I'm going to look in my bag and I'm going to pull out the shadow goop. And I'm going to loosen the vial. And I'm going to throw it at the gate. Cool. Are you going to try to keep yourself hidden when that happens? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, because you are not moving, um, you can make either... You can make a, a deception or a stealth check with advantage, with a, whichever you prefer. Plus one versus minus one. Ah. Fifteen. Okay. You throw it out, and the shadowy goop lands in the street, and it coalesces <laughs> with the rainwater, sending a palpable sense of shadowy energy throughout the area. Flipping over to Sebastian. After waiting a few minutes, Sebastian, you can hear this howl come up from the dungeons below. This low and the rattling of chains. Um, and there's a general commotion as several of the Hooded Lanterns try to one of the sick hooded lanterns just says, awful beast, why are we keeping it here? I approach that, that soldier mm-hmm. and I kneel down next to him. Good morning, my good sir. The man is losing his hair in patches. He looks like he's suffering from delirium sickness. He's been stripped down and bandaged. He looks in a pretty bad way. My friend, I understand what it's like to suffer from delirium sickness. This monster that you're keeping here, perhaps I could help. What what sort of monster is it? Make a persuasion check. Advantage or no? No. Okay. Twenty three. He looks up and he says, he grabs you by the arm and says, that crazy bastard, that crazy wizard, he brought them in here with him. They're keeping them in the dungeon. They scream once in a while. It shakes all through the halls. Thank you very much. And I quickly stand up and start to walk away. And I, I you said there's two guards watching. Yeah. I head to the guards and I look at them and I say, I'm terribly sorry, but I need to use the restroom. I'm not feeling too well. It might be the delirium potions. <laughs> the, uh... One of the guards, a slight woman from beneath her helmet, she says, Fine, I'll show you the way. And Thank she you. leads you towards one of the the washrooms in the keep. Um, there's, uh... She takes you up a spiral tower towards again another one that's built into the the keep itself opens the door and says go relieve yourself thank you will you be waiting out here for me yes it might be a little while that's fine okay (laughs) and i close the door and lock it and then sit there and i don't know (laughs) think i'm going to sit here and think all right. For a little while. <laughs> well, and that's where we'll end the night. <laughs> <laughs> On the can. <laughs> Two characters in the bathroom. <laughs> One hiding in a... In, oh, wow. <laughs> like, am I anywhere close to her, or is it a completely it's different com- Completely right different now? part of the... Man, we At least you're not covered in poop. Hard. <laughs> I tried to set up a nice way to reconnect us, but no, we have to make it complicated. Oh, golly. At least you know where they are now. It's okay, Cornelius. 
<laughs> we we have our answer. We know we know where Oscar is. So yay. Yeah, but is the queen mission with them? accomplished? But is the queen with them? That's I don't know. the question. <laughs> Hopefully. What is Petra hiding? Yeah. Oh. Uh, this is great. This is That so was great. so funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so many laughs. Oh man. Yeah. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight. We had a real blast. Uh, that's a very... Un- <laughs> <laughs> Have fun DMing that one. <laughs> Try not to kill us. Okay, we'll see how we do with uh, with this uh, next week uh, in uh, <laughs> in the show. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna go over all my notes <laughs> and see what we how this is gonna work out. We always find a way out. We're crafty. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, What's the worst time? <laughs> no, <it's not. laughs> what is the worst that can happen? Indeed. In any case, that's where we will wrap it up uh, for tonight. Uh, we will be right back at you next week. Of course, we did have a time changeover here in uh, in Canada. We are on back on uh, Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, so we will continue from that f- through the summer. And hopefully we have some more bright, bright lights. Um, of course, a massive thank you to our cast, Jill, Kelly, and Joe, for playing it so well tonight. Uh, and a huge thank you to our stream producer Kyle for running chat and uh, keeping things going be- behind the scenes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's all you get. <laughs> that, that's, that's that's all we're getting, eh? Yeah. Nice thumbs, thumbs up. up from Kyle. Um, <laughs> you sure, you don't want to. No, step, no. Kyle okay. is very camera shy. It's okay. Uh, as well as a big thank you to uh, to Clayton who is our main producer main series producer and uh, keeps all this uploaded to YouTube for us as well. And if you are enjoying the stream and would like to support our work, uh, please check out our Patreon. You can find it by following the links below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. All of our patrons get to join our patron exclusive discord chat, which yes. has been super awesome. Uh, we've been having chats for dungeon master advice and player advice, as well as chatting about theories and spoilers for uh, Drakenheim as well. Uh, it's really, really fun because we've been able to give some more people that have questions about their campaigns or their characters or Drakenheim in general a bit of a behind the scenes look at things. And it's been a lot of fun and very distracting for all of us yeah. <laughs> as well. So if you are interested in becoming a patron, that's a little bit of a thank you to connect with us uh, in a more intimate way. Of course, if you have any other questions or, or comments, just always leave a message on one of our videos or drop us a line on Facebook. We're, we're super, super chatty and we love to hear from you all. So anything you want to throw at us whether it's do you think this feat is any good or how do i need help with my campaign uh we might have to do a q a of some kind probably soon too as well our episode tonight a big thank you of course to skull splitter dice for sponsoring tonight's episode uh they sent us some really lovely metal dice that rolled a ton of ones for me tonight <laughs> keep using yeah them. Keep those, <laughs> ones. those ones they those have ones. turned on me uh <laughs> but they're still really beautiful dice and i really love them uh and you can get a set of your for yourself by heading on over to skullsplitterdice.com and using the discount code ddudes to save 15 percent off your first order and if you want to try your hand at maybe winning a set for yourself, you can enter our contest by following the link in the description below. Uh, just follow through to where it says Skull Splitter Dice underneath this video on Twitch, and you can click the link there to enter the contest for your chance to win a free set of their dice. I think Skull Splitter Dice is also doing a really awesome Kickstarter right now yeah. for their plastic dice. Mm-hmm. So that's a, that's a good in for that as well. So check them out too there because there's lots and lots of sources of dice. And if you're anything like any of us, you can never have enough dice. Dice oh, life. So much. Yep. Uh, tonight's game session featured audio by Tabletop Audio. Thank you again. And the voiceover in our intro video by 100 Years Boar. Thank you so much. Great voice. Beautiful. 
Our game accessories were generously provided by Axe and Shield. Tonight, you finally got to see the flight stands, yeah. uh, which are really awesome for making characters that fly or anything or climb even. And you got to see the initiative tracker. So check out Axe and Shield. We also used Terrain by Dwarven Forge. You saw their castle builder system and the awesome city terrain. But a really special news, we got a bonus episode coming this week, sponsored by Dwarven Forge. Uh, Dwarven Forge uh, challenged Sebastian, Veo, and Pluto to take on the Dungeon of Doom, their awesome module to celebrate their amazing terrain that Kickstarter that they just are restocking uh, next Monday. So we got to play some other module. They set us some Dwarven Forge to play. We pre-recorded that whole thing with some awesome shots of the setup that we used for it. So check that out. That's also dropping next week as a total bonus video where you get to see more of us playing some D&D. The Ooh. best. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we also use awesome miniatures by WizKids and Hero Forge. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time in the Dungeons of Drakenheim. Bye. Bye.